albatross around the egg. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Heart of War. I, as always, am, am your host, Bo. And with me, the co-host, really the reason to be here. The, uh, the Thelma to my Louise. <laughs> <laughs> the Laverne to my Shirley, R.I.P. Cindy Williams. You blow so much smoke up my ass. <laughs> it's, it's Don't stop though, by all means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, it, it, if one cannot uh, bloviate a bit about <laughs> about uh, one's partner, then you know what's the point. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, no, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm always, as usual, delighted to record with you and be here and chat about our nonsense. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this episode. I think it's going to be some some good juicy chat. Yeah, and it's the it's the Valentine's Day episode. It is. Happy Valentine's. So let me check the schedule because this is going to drop like the day after no i'm sorry uh about a, less than a week before valentine's day so if right, you are yeah. listening to this episode in or around the time it drops it is pre-valentine's day this will get you uh ready it'll get you excited we're gonna yeah. uh list the best valentine's gifts <laughs> actually we are not gonna do any of that but wouldn't it be fun if we did uh yeah i actually i never get any because um well my last relationship notwithstanding um because my birthday falls on the 10th just before valentine's um i always got dumped in january so wow yeah <laughs> like until i got to like the age of having like long-term relationships of which i've only had two mm -hmm. um like anything sort of like in between or like, you know when like you're younger and you know you have those relationships last like a few months or whatever yeah, those ones always weirdly ended in January. I got because, Christmas though. I well, got Christmas, but yeah. I think they were just like, "Oh shit, it's your birthday already!" And Valentine, yeah, no, I'm out. <laughs> right, I'm that's, out. that's too much. I'm on a budget. <laughs> Way too much. Yeah, I wanted a nice Christmas girlfriend. I got that, and now I'm good. Cheers. <laughs> Boy, that is, it, there has to be a Hallmark movie called The Christmas Girlfriend. Oh for, yeah, for sure. If for not, me. I'm oh, writing. There's it. a Christmas boyfriend. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's a Christmas boyfriend. There must be a Christmas girlfriend. Yeah, that's well, the sequel that's, or a prequel. You know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I I have not. Like, I know I've got to get my girlfriend something for Valentine's Day. I haven't really thought yeah. too much about what yet. Um, yeah. And I really should start that that process. Um. But it's just been really that busy. Bloody hot. You, you, I mean, I'm telling you, uh, she would go for it. Like it, it could be something pretty grim because she she likes a good uh, crime procedural. Yeah, and get her a uh, get her like um you know like in the Simpsons when Lisa does the uh, what's it called with like the heart under the floor like out of the fucking telltale heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it called? What's the fucking thing called? Uh, Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, no, but like what she makes. What's it called? There's like a a di not a, a diorama. Diaphragm. Thank you. Not <laughs> yeah, die from something else. Yeah, um, <laughs> a couple of different things, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not all completely irrelevant to the show. Um, yeah, no, a, a diorama. Yeah, you should get her like a diorama of like the Tao Tao Heart. <laughs> I, I can't remember if this was yesterday or today. We were talking about something and uh, about like where to go for spring break. And she said, right. we, ought to, we ought to take the kids to the body farm. The what now? The Body Farm, which is a place uh, in East Tennessee uh, set up by the University of Tennessee there. And what okay. they do, the Body Farm is where they take dead bodies and they put them in, you know, like cars and bury them. And it's basically a forensic study. Oh, I know this. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought you said the buddy farm. No, 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 not the buddy oh, farm. The body yeah, farm. The body farm. Oh, yeah, and God. she was like, we ought to take the kids to that. I was like, well, what are you trying to do to these children? Like, th that is, the right, that is the most horrible. Like, I would love to go. That would be fascinating. But, you know, do we really want to deal with the kids being, like, traumatized by you seeing a half-buried corpse? Yeah, but trauma creates the best sense of humor, so... Look, the kids are not. It, 
<laughs> they they're they are fine on both senses of humor and drama. Well, one of them is fine well, on right, sense of, right. of humor. The other one has no sense of humor. No sense of humor. Yeah, sure. You know, like uh, he's very hilarious. literal. He like you can't yeah. you can't be sarcastic because he gets like actually offended by it. And you're like, no, 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 man. We're just being we're just kidding. Well, well how am I yeah. supposed to know that? <laughs> oh. I love sarcasm. I feel bad for that kid because sarcasm is the highest form of humor and I'll hear nothing against it. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the weirdest things I've had to unlearn is because I'm a very sarcastic individual as well. And one of the Mm -hmm. big no-nos in education is like, don't be sarcastic with your students because they can take it the wrong way. And, you know, it's a, you're, it's supposed to be a positive setting. So you can't be like, oh yeah, you did great. You know, that kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my teachers did not get that memo right right well that's a thing because when i was growing up it was like my teachers were mean as shit in like in wonderful yeah. ways sometimes they were very funny about it oh um, yeah yeah hilarious but you, you know it's like the the curriculum today they're like yeah don't do that because th- these kids will shoot you so <laughs> Oh, oh right, yeah, yeah like, it's like that. Yeah, I got that. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah. you be the one that they like, you know, like be the classroom that they mm-hmm. skip. Uh, yeah, <laughs> or this is like the cool one that, you know, can really reach those kids. Uh, how do I reach these kids? Yeah, um, <laughs> you got that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it, it's funny because as I was telling you before we recorded, I am probably pretty close to having my, my first classroom of like my own kids that like, for so realsies important. being you know no mr ransdell <gasps> new kink unlocked Not yeah good. right mr mr Rans- oh mr ransdell i know i'm getting a sweater Hi. that's got like the patches on the elbows and everything are you you're gonna get some elbow patches oh hell yeah oh my God, that's so funny i was watching the mighty boots with a mate the other day and we watched um the episode of uh fucking eels uh-huh. and you know, he's got the elbow patch. Have you seen? Do you watch Mighty Boosh? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, um, it, it, anyone, I have. It's it, been forever. Anyone who's watched Mighty Boosh, season three, episode Eels, it's like the first episode. And Howard Moon has, he's trying to like sell these elbow patches and here's like the survival patch and it's got flint like in it and he can like rub his elbows together to create a fire. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so anyway, sorry, it's just weird to hear about elbow patches twice in one week. Yeah. I, I yeah. There's something about like, the image of the English teacher with, you know, like the cable knit sweater with the suede elbow patches. I'm look, I can't wait. I'm very you excited. Can be Giles. <gasps> you can yeah. Be Giles. I'm kind of Giles. You're kind of Giles. Oh, it's not man. English, but what you can do a British accent. You can do a good British eh, accent. I I, it's it passable. I can, I can, if I'm watching enough, Buffy, <laughs> right. I'll, I'll have everyone call me Ripper. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm excited. Like, get your kids to record class and then send it to me, please. Yeah, absolutely. I mm-hmm. I will have. I'll see if I can get the class who all say that at some point. Oh uh, my god, please. And then I'll I'll just use it for nefarious purposes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna like in in w- while I'm waiting on the the full time classroom thing I've, I'll, I'll probably start substituting like monday yeah and so i'll be Wait, that's not the thing to get excited about is it <laughs> it's substituting sorry i thought i in my head i heard that you were going to be starting the job on monday but no i got it yeah. no 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 but uh, it's still you know like at, at the very least i'm kind of done with all the prep work and now i'm yeah i'm just waiting to get a position and in the meantime i'm still going to be bouncing around schools and kind of meeting all the administrations and stuff like that and mm-hmm. like the the uh interview that i've got came from a guy that was like hey you applied for for a different thing but we had a job open up and would you be interested in like starting earlier and i was like hell yeah how broken are yep, the kids yep. are they fucked up <laughs> are they Uh, probably that was another conversation i was having with my girlfriend i was like the thing is man if you're taking over for a teacher that like is bouncing in february like that's either because the teacher like broke a leg or got pregnant or just was like these kids are garbage and i am out of here (laughs) yeah yeah 
it's i mean we'll treat it as an amber flag for now yeah we don't know that like these are all the questions but i'll like i'll report back if they're terrible yeah, kids I'll, I'll, yeah i'll yeah. be i'll you know i'll be happy to come back with evidence and names and yeah. addresses and a rolodex yeah like you know trevor yeah. johnson of 13 robin way he's in one of my classes and he's a piece of human garbage <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. he's only 14 but you can tell <laughs> I can see it in his eyes. Yeah, he's never going to be worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just bit him right off. <laughs> Dude, that's probably what I when I have the interview. That's what I should tell the principal is like, look, here's here. I'm going to save us all a lot of time because I can tell the good kids just like that. Yeah. So you I can who you're, who you're worth investing in. Right. I, like we can just stop worrying about half the class after day two. <laughs> you're optimistic with half. <laughs> yeah that's yeah yeah my girlfriend also said that <laughs> you know because I, I i'm like i why why would you not want to go to school and pay attention and be successful and she's like what school did you go to yeah like for reals though yeah. and also like what kid is that smart and self-aware but but that's how it like i remember being in school and really like have not every class certainly but having teachers that i loved you know that um i was like I, i'm really looking forward to that class because it's it's kind of a good time and i learn things and i like the way they teach i had mm, three teach mm, four teachers bearing in mind i took 11 subjects in my final year, I had four teachers that I liked and got on well with yeah. and would like mm, look forward to class as a strong word or a strong <laughs> phrase. Yeah. But like it wouldn't be as shit. Yeah. You know, and also um, I was pretty academic. So like, oh God, this I don't mean it in like a fucking braggy kind of way, but like um, I just found school pretty easy in yeah, terms yeah. of like the learning. Uh, apart from math I fucking sucked at math but mm -hmm. um but out with that like yeah like I found school pretty fucking easy and straightforward um so my enjoyment of the class literally came down to for the most part whether I liked the teacher or not mm -hmm. and I had out of 11 classes I had four teachers that I liked so, so that plus the you know the incessant bullying was, uh, school was not fun <laughs> and I was just like I think my agenda was like how can I get like what I need to get out of here? You know, yeah. <laughs> relatively unscathed. Um, but those teachers definitely helped. And like, to be fair, it'd have been a lot worse without those teachers. So, right. And I'm going to be super cool. Oh, you're going to be the fucking coolest. Yeah. Don't doubt that. So, I mean, that alone should I'll just come out calling you Bo. You'd be like, ah, uh, see, I can't. Mr. Here's Lance the thing. My father's name yeah 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 like i want to keep a little bit of order um like i don't want to be too chummy with them yeah you know like you want to maintain that air of authority and yeah, true. you know i've already got the sweater with the patches so they know that i'm cool <laughs> <laughs> and this, when is I talk go one of, this is gonna go one or two ways for you mate <laughs> <laughs> and when i talk to him about the tiktok you know oh. <laughs> yeah just um yeah the flossing uh-huh i'll turn the chair around and get real with them <laughs> you'll tie your jacket around your waist yeah like dylan yeah. from 90210 yeah right exactly that yeah <laughs> and um you'll talk to them about like the hip-hop and the boogie woogies and stuff or whatever uh -huh. cool kids say nowadays just say the word like say the phrase it slaps uh-huh and we're good that's literally all i know it slaps and uh yeets means like they fucking kill them i here's a thing i may have mentioned this on on this show before but um so apologies <laughs> so but the one of the things i heard that i thought was really cool that another teacher did another english teacher did is uh -huh. awarding extra points for bringing in definitions of current slang. Oh, yeah. I think, I don't know if we said it on air or off air, but yeah, I remember having this conversation and it is good. Yeah. I think that's a really cool idea um, because it, you know, it, it truly does show students like, hey, the language continues to evolve and the, the, the things 
uh, that a word means can change, like definitions can change over time. And yeah, and, and also that's as well, like the way that you communicate and relate to each other is not to be like scoffed at and it's to learn yeah. from as well. Like it's a mutual respect thing. Yeah, yeah. And also then it gives you an insight to what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> right. So if I hear like, you know, Mr. Ansel's the jingles and I'm like, the jingles, what the fuck is the jingles? <laughs> That's not, that's, do they say that? Yeah, no, I don't think not. so. I, I, no, that, okay, you made that up. Okay, because I, yeah. I was like, yeah. I just stole that from the Green Mile and Mr. Yeah, Tangles. Uh, yeah. That is what popped to my mind. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Jingles gonna go to Mouseville. Oh, oh, no, don't. No, it's too late. It's too late for this. I can't deal with the emotion. Oh, yeah, you no John Coffee references. No. <laughs> No, no, because it's it's a double whammy now. So <laughs> that, that's how that's how he did. Oh no! But he I killed them it. with a love. Oh, dang! It's so sad. All right, I well, literally, I'm a fucking wreck when I watch that film. Yeah, I well, me too. Like, I, that, that's a movie I'll cry. Like, I'll cry at anything these days. I'm a, I'm a yeah, soft touch. In fairness, same. Yeah. You know. My hardcore exterior is only a front, really. I'm just fucking sugar. Yeah. Well, marshmallow I... goop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a small. <laughs> like, I had one of those moments where I cried at something the other day where I was like, I, like, I was embarrassed I was crying at it. Did your missus turn around and ask if you're on your period? <laughs> No, no, uh, I did it. I did it alone. You know, I, I was not uh, trying to open myself up to that kind of ridicule. She's, oh, okay. she's tougher than me in every way. So I don't doubt it. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. She, she'd be like, what are you crying at you, baby? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that commercial was yeah. so touchy. <laughs> Look at the puppy. Right. Right. It yeah. really loves that toilet roll. Yeah. It was some, I think it was the end of bird box i was doing a, I was i was doing notes on the movie bird box for uh an episode of pick six movies and it's not even a very good movie and yet by the end of the movie i was like rolling a tear at like her giving the kids names and everything and i was like why am i crying at th this movie's not even good i've been emotionally affected by nothing oh mate i like bird box i haven't watched it since it came out mind it's i did quite like it it's it's not great um it wasn't like mind-blowing well it, the problem is is it's this weird combination of the happening and uh, a quiet place yeah and it's not as good as either of those no it's not so it's got sandra bullock in it if sandra bullock wasn't in it i don't think it had done as well as it did I, and that's what that's what did it to me is that I like Sandra Bullock and her like begging someone to ju like just take the kids, just save them. And I was oh, like, this is man. starting to get to me. Because, right? you know, now because I'm around kids all the time, I start thinking about that of like, yeah, I mean, of course you would do that. You would obviously sacrifice yourself to save your children if you, if it came right down to it. So I, I wouldn't. No. No, I got too much to live for. I, you know, I would do it for one of them one up on me i only got one to choose from yeah yeah, yeah. i got i got two and one like stands a pretty good chance at yeah. being a decent I mean, person fair, ava's wily she doesn't need me to save her she'll fucking she'd <laughs> sacrifice me right she's a dickhead <laughs> trip you to save herself she, you kid she fucking would <laughs> like, she fucking would and she'd only cry because she can't reach the fucking snacks oh without yeah me. So yeah, like you joke, but no, she's I'm looking at her picture now. She looks all sweet and innocent, but underneath that, pure menace. Yeah, I you know just before it's we recorded, child. the girl comes in and gives me a big hug, and because I hadn't seen her all day uh, practically, oh, yeah. she gives me a, a big hug, and I was like, hey, you know, your brother said hello, and et cetera, et cetera, and yeah. and I thought she was just like, hey, I missed you, I haven't seen you. And then she hands me her iPad and she's like, here, I need this charged. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. All right. I see. I get it. <laughs> Little jerk. And nice. she's the one I would save. Yeah. She, yeah. She, yeah. She's the learn. good one. <laughs> you'll learn. <laughs> so, uh, hey, let's actually do a show. Um, yeah, let's do a show and talk about Valentine's and yeah. the, fucking, the messes that, that, that that holiday is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but But first... We we have a segment, a recurring segment now, 
Yeah. Cult. Thanks for this, by the way. There's not that many fucking things on the internet about this. So this might be a short-lived uh, segment, but we'll keep going as long as we can. Yeah. As long as, long as there are people dating the ethereal. And then, like, reporting about it yeah. as well. I look, I hope it never stops. I hope more and more weirdos try to date ghosts. But it's a segment we call Ghosted. Yeah. And what is the uh so this one so unlike the ones before mm -hmm. where it's just like headlines and not really much else this is a full-blown fucking article from excuse me the daily star mm. of course of course mm -hmm. man in relationship with ghosts explains how they're getting into the christmas spirit uh mm-hmm mm-hmm Gary Denoa has been in a relationship with a ghost for over two years. The 35-year-old exclusively lifted the lid on the couple's sex life during the festive period. All right. Uh, All right. Down, so, yeah. So we're getting into the sex life yeah, of yeah, people who date ghosts. Okay. Well, I always assumed it was the Ghostbusters thing of you go to a haunted place, <laughs> a ghost unbuckles your belt, and yeah. then you go cross-eyed. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he get it says there's a photo of him with with his girlfriend. He's basically <laughs> there's all these photos with him. I mean, just... so who is his girlfriend? The girlfriend's dead, right? The the girlfriend is the ghost. yeah, it's a ghost called Lisa. Lisa, okay. How how um, old is this ghost? Uh oh, I don't know if it says. Um, I mean, she's probably older than him. <laughs> well yeah you would think see that's one of my problems is like uh with, with all these dating of ghosts is that you're dating somebody that's like 300 years old it doesn't say how old she like what do you talk about like hey remember chamber music and like no <laughs> i hear like henry's getting onto his sixth wife god what a what a tyrant um <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Uh, yeah, so all these pictures are him with Lisa, <laughs> and it's just like his arm in the air as though it's like round her shoulders, <laughs> or he's just kissing nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we can't see her. Obviously, it just looks kind of silly because obviously she's there, but like you know, we just can't see her. So it just looks like he's just got his arm up in the air. Um, a man who previously described his quote unquote amazing. I don't even think the reporter believes this quote is amazing sex life with a ghost has revealed more details of his relationship mm -hmm. gary de broke the news of his love interest with a specter to daily star online back in october so this is a follow-up article <laughs> right we we published an article now we have more questions yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean you would wouldn't you um he detailed how he met lisa in a restaurant when he was dining alone two years ago the <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. <clears throat> the couple crossed paths when the spirit recommended the risotto to Gary. So, <laughs> so will the pair be spending the festive period together? Gary from New Jersey um, spoke to Daily Star Online about how he plans to get into the Christmas spirit with Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, scroll down, scroll down, ads, ads, ads. I'll visit my parents over the holidays, but Lisa will stay at home. I'm not ready to introduce her to my parents yet. She understands, but it certainly has put a strain on our relationship. She wants to meet my parents. I just have a feeling they won't respond well to it if I do. Hopefully in the new year, I'll be able to feel comfortable enough to take that step. I'm starting to introduce her to more and more of my friends, which has had mixed results. More people are initially confused or they think that I'm joking. But once they see how happy she makes me, they're totally cool with it. I want to know. I just... I would love to be a fly on the wall. All right. So first of all, the guy's from Jersey. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, it, you know, it, yeah, no, I have no follow up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> what he's saying is, hey, look at this ghost I got over here. Look at this fine piece of ghostly ass. It's not just yet. And introducing her to his friends, you know, hey, this here is Lisa. <laughs> Let me, one word of warning, she does not pay for nothing. 
turns out ghost bucks or whatever they use in the afterlife are never used like, here. It's like what's the face in the last episode? You got all pissy because of like, yeah, right. Put the pill. And that's this guy's sh- know, at least this guy knows where it's at. I'm sure that his friends are like, well, some of them took it well, some of them took it not so well, because some of his friends were like, J- listen, Jerry, you are fucking crazy. You need to get some help because you are kissing air. And, and so, right, like, I want to I wanted introduce her to my parents. Who are you? At? Right. Like- I'll tell you what, I've brought home some guys, right, who my mom has found, say, let's, Let's just call it questionable. Mm-hmm. I, I think my mum would actually miss those guys if I turned around and was like, "Ah, oh, hey, here's my boyfriend, James," and they were like, "Where?" And I'm like, "Right here, mum. Can yeah. you not see them?" I think. Uh, yeah, I think she'd miss the days where I just brought home psychopaths. You know, and, and, <laughs> you know, and the mother's first question is going to be, how am I supposed to get grandchildren with this ghost whore of yours? <laughs> is she going to give me a ghost grandbaby? No, then dump her. <laughs> oh, but I tell you what, you save a ton of money in condoms. I mean, sure. That's only because ghosts only do anal. Everybody knows that. <laughs> that and head. That's just you know, uh-huh. getting pregnant from either of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't <laughs> they don't do vaginal. <laughs> Too much ectoplasm. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't want to clean that off the walls. Oh my god, can you imagine? No. Nah, no. Nah. Um every, so... every ghost is a squirter. <laughs> <laughs> that's why these buggers are marked explicit. They call that's why he's called Slimer. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Slimer so, was all vagina. <laughs> fucking hell, that's definitely from like Jack the Ripper days of his green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is all up. All or a up leper. <laughs> God, Not just ghost. things that are falling off. Slimer is the vaginal ghost of a leper. <laughs> You won't see that the in Ghostbusters fake. Afterlife. I was going to say, the fanfic you never thought you needed. Yeah, right. Right? Someone get on Wattpad. <laughs> I'm said right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where's that <laughs> fan film? Right? I would pay that twice over. Um, so, previously Gary, who works in the hotel industry. I don't know why that makes it worse. <laughs> but it just does. Um, describe the couple's sex life as amazing. Our sex life is ever evolving. <laughs> it, <laughs> it gets <laughs> it gets better and better. There's always new sensations, different vibrations, which I guess is the best way to describe it. It's like your whole body is having sex. And since Lisa is a spirit. <laughs> and since Lisa is a spirit. She's more flexible, which allows us to experiment with all sorts of new positions. Think- sex, around the ho- <laughs> sex around the holidays is a little different and it has more meaning because we are closer to the end of one year and the beginning of a new one. Yeah, I'm sure that whole like life, death, birth cycle for her is really fucking meaningful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's writing his own Kama Sutra, the Kama Spooktra. <laughs> Um, apparently they like to do Christmas carols with their friends. My voice isn't as good as Lisa's, but I try my best. <laughs> but at least mine can be heard. <laughs> She's just hitting those real high notes. Right, right. Um, we also love ice skating, but not at Rockefeller Center. It gets too crowded and Lisa gets a little claustrophobic. <laughs> what on earth? I mean, it reminds her of the coffin, I'm sure. <laughs> We prefer Bryant Park because it's more quiet and free if you have your own skate, which Lisa and I do. <laughs> can, you... <laughs> can you imagine going up to the fucking stand being like, oh yeah, two pairs of boots, one for me and my lady friend, and just indicating the air? Yeah. Uh, what size do you need there, pal? 
Uh, you know, she's a ghost. Any size will do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a special rate for ghosts and angels. (laughs) (laughs) The Christmas spirit, after all. Uh, It says, Gary also told the Daily Star online what he plans on getting his girlfriend of two years, Lisa, for Christmas this month. He spilled, (laughs) like he's spilling the cost. Lisa has never been to Disney (laughs) Holy shit. Then go. Then just pop over. You're a ghost. <laughs> like you don't have to wait. You have to stand on ceremony. So I got his tickets to do that and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. <laughs> she'll fit right in. Right. Yeah, you take her to the haunted mansion. She'll never leave. <laughs> She's gonna be hooking up with nearly headless Nick. You know. Well, and also, how does she know what a Harry Potter is? Like, I want to know when Lisa died. Like, do, is this someone I who mean, died in, like, you know, 2018? <laughs> then maybe. But she... surely, surely the dead, I mean, you know, even Harry Potter transcends into the spiritual realm, surely. Yeah, I suppose. I just, like, for them, it's just like a reality TV show. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> What's uh... that Potter kid up to this week? <laughs> I, I love and hate this at the same time like i love it because it's just so ridiculous but i hate it because (laughs) this is somebody who's wasting two years of their life on dating a ghost (laughs) it was this is what he said about the trips it was expensive but she's worth again ghost not paying for shit (laughs) i just i mean i don't i don't i don't get it i just don't I mean, okay, all kidding aside, this guy must have some sort of psychotic illness. A hundred percent. Because he, he clearly thinks he's having a conversation with someone. I mean, he, he recommended him the risotto. <laughs> he's, he's buying tickets to Disney World and Universal Studios. And it's got to be like, is he buying one? And just being like, look, she's a ghost. She'll slip in. It's not like you can put a, a wristband. It's like the opposite of it's like the opposite of trying to sneak more than one mate into a festival, right? You know, it's like, oh, I just, oh, but fucking the the Wizarding World of Harry Potter got me because I'm just like, mate, don't introduce her to the bloody Baron if she's got any kind of like daddy issues. Oh right, you know, hug it, hug it, her. Right down in those dungeons, am I right? Mm -hmm. It's just. Uh, like I, I again, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the idea of taking a ghost home to meet your parents and having them being like, "Well, now we got to lock him up. We can't <laughs> let him walk around dating ghosts and whatnot." <laughs> you know, it's like when, I, did you ever see the movie Harvey with Jimmy Stewart, where he's got the invisible <laughs> rabbit friend? It's it's oh, that where, where all the relatives yeah all the I, relatives are just like horrified that he's gonna introduce. Was it was it like a kids thing? But one of those kids things that really shouldn't have been a kids thing. Uh, I don't know if it was meant for kids. Like, like I like invisible it, but... rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a six foot. And it's like a yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's like yeah i know th- yes fucking i didn't think anyone else fucking knew that and i got to a point where i'd given up talking about it and i fucking ended up forgetting it and now i've just fucking it's all coming back to me yeah like, it's a um, wonderful movie yeah but it's a bit dark isn't it? Yeah, a little bit yeah like they end up taking what? him to a mental institution to give him a shot that's gonna make harvey disappear yeah yeah and he's <sighs> he's like well if my relatives think i ought to get it i guess i ought to get it oh my god it's a yeah, it's a terrific movie uh, yeah, there, there, yeah, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a line in Harvey that I uh, I will remember the rest of my life as long as my brain cells still work, and it's uh, when he's talking about going to the bar with Harvey. Yeah, and he says, uh, "People come into the bar and they talk to us about all the big wonderful things that they've done, and all the big terror or the, the big terrible things that they've done, and the big wonderful things that they're going to do." Because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. And then I introduce them to Harvey and he's bigger than anything that they bring to me. And those, mm. sel- those same people seldom come back. But that's envy, my dear. And there's a little bit of that in the best of us. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful movie. 
Um, but <laughs> it's yeah, it, you really should. It's a great film. But uh, uh, but yeah, one of the big things in that movie is them like just constantly his relatives being like, "Whatever you do, do not talk about this stupid rabbit <laughs> to anybody that matters." Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and but you know that's that's this. It's you like him going around being like, "Hey, have I talked to you about Lisa?" And they're like, "Yeah, you did," and we think you're a lunatic. Yeah. I just, I don't know why, but just the fact that he works in a hotel, just, it gives me the ick. Like, do you think he's taken her there? Maybe that's where they met, you know? No, they met in a restaurant, didn't they? He, like, she recommended him the Rizzo. Well, but. He was dining alone. Well, of course. And he still is. <laughs> yeah, that's not changed, pal. Yeah. Your prescription has, but. It. Yeah, I. Like I, th- once again, I have more questions than you could possibly answer about this because yeah, and I, unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a follow up. Right. Like I, yeah. I need to know things like, <laughs> aside from the risotto. Yeah. What made you realize she was a ghost? Does she look any different? Can you see through her? Can anyone okay. else see her? Has any of your friends seen her other than you? Yeah, I just, this is the thing, right? Those friends who apparently, you know, mix things and apparently everyone sees how happy he is and they'll like, like, do they, what do they do? Do they just play along? Right. Or they're just like, you know, it, like he must be paying for everything when they go out. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I'll, I'll, listen, I'm already buying Lisa's. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up your drinks too. And they're like, all right, I guess we'll go because yeah, it's like- free, free booze. Or, like, maybe he's just, like, paying for leases, but, like, there's no food come out, and so one of them just gets their meal paper. Like, what does the waiter think when he's he's just like, oh, yeah, one's for my lady? Like, one, hey, yeah, that one's for her? And it's just an empty chair. Yeah. Like, what the f- <sighs> Yeah. I don't. I Yeah, no, I have so many questions. Like, I, you, I just, I don't. I know. I, but I also adore... Uh, the fact that this is a thing that goes on, you know, like it, on the one hand, it, it's entirely depressing. On the other hand, I, I'm, I'm so happy that there's this much weirdness in the world. Oh yeah. I'm going to, um, yeah. Like, well, uh, yeah. When the thing comes out, I'll share the article on the page because if nothing else, I pretty much read the whole entire article, but if nothing else, I just need people to see these photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like, <clears throat> all oh right. Gosh, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's ghosted for this for this one. <laughs> Let's uh, let us begin uh, our our actual Valentine's discussion then, because you know, yeah, it is. Uh, this is a show always uh, featuring the uh, the notion of of love and horror sitting alongside one another, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, what, what, what uh, February is that, you know, it is, it is the, the center, the, the, the heart of the year in many ways, not the oh, middle of it, but nice. it's, you know, it's the, the month that we dedicate to it's the one off to the, to the right. By the <laughs> yeah. Heart. Yeah. And, right. And it's us like all th- thinking about love and, and appreciating the, the love that we have and sometimes regretting the love that we don't have and, you know, like Valentine's Day, if, if you're not with someone, kind of sucks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and, and unless it, you just don't care, because like a lot of people <coughs> are just like fucking stupid card company holiday. I, for one, think it's literally just the month where everyone fucks because it's like, well, we've done Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's shitty weather. Bored out my mind. The novelty of like, you know, January and doing all my New Year's resolutions and playing with like my christmas toys or use watch normal blu-rays or whatever is all done what do we do now ah well we fuck right let's make a holiday about it so you know we can also spend money and eat chocolate with no regrets well and it's a little more of the not necessarily single but it's like the adult holiday of like christmas is all about kids thanksgiving is all about the family and like you said valentine's day is like you've got all that behind you and now just fuck the person you're with yeah. and they, you know nothing wrong with that i mean you're yeah, right okay. it's 
highly commercialized and all that, but you know, what isn't, what holiday isn't at this point? I mean, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, the, the only one that's escaped that so far is Kwanzaa. It's what now? Kwanzaa. What What's Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa is the, uh, like African Christmas. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. Okay. I mean, that's probably why I've never heard of it. Cause there's no fucking mass marketing on it. So, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you hear a few people celebrating it and it sounds pretty cool, but yeah, yeah it doesn't get like cards and stuff. No. So. But- I mean, good for it though, because it's like, it's like the non-conformist, like the kind of cool kid of holidays. Yeah, I mean, if you it know, weren't, like, oh, I don't fight in for that. Right, if it weren't total appropriation, I'd celebrate. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but like, the... yeah, no, it's cool that one of the holidays has managed to stay true. Yeah, like, you know. But uh, yeah. so, so we're talking about the movie Valentine from two thousand one. <laughs> Valentine's episode, we do Valentine. That's right. See what we did there. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. next year Brain's we'll do overtime. My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, um, clearly. But then we'll do the remake. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, there was one before the Jensen Ackles one. No, it was oh. Jensen Ackles rules and is the best. Um, I you know that movie gets a lot of a, a, a lot of grief, but I think uh, that that My Bloody Valentine remake is all right. I really enjoy it, and I would enjoy it regardless of Jensen Ackles. He does definitely tip the scales in my favor though mm-hmm. but like <clears throat> i just i just think it's goofy fun yeah not once it's a in harmless the horror movie <laughs> yeah not once in the movie though does he say sammy no he doesn't i, or I don't even think he says son of a bitch yeah uh, he hasn't he didn't drink whiskey once and i'm, I'm pissed off about it or eat a cheeseburger i don't know maybe he does no, that i don't know pie definitely doesn't eat pie no um uh, you know, that's a Valentine's movie without some pie eating. Am I right? What? 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 Um, <laughs> so, all right. A co- I'm sorry. A couple of stats on this movie before <laughs> we get into it is it was directed by a guy named Jamie Blanks, who also yeah. directed Urban Legend. He did. Which is what a one-two. Urban Legend and Valentine feel very much of a type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and of uh, and of a, an age, yeah, for sure. Like, like these period. are both time capsule kind of movies, hundred percent. And uh, pretty stat cast: Denise Richards, David Boreanaz. Oh, uh, be still my heart. Um, I was literally just like, it's been about fifteen years since I've watched this film. Uh huh. And anytime I see. David Boreanaz when he's either not playing Angel mm-hmm. or he's not playing Sealy Booth. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched his latest show, like Seal or Navy Seals, whatever it's called. Um, to be fair. But like anytime I see him in something else, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> and it's just he's so angely in this with mm-hmm. his hair. And his stupid oversized t-shirts. I just uh, what what is up with those fits? Just yeah, mean, again, time capsule. Late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. It was all about yeah, it is. loose shirt over, you know, some some Baggy slacks. Jeans yeah, sloping down your ass and yeah, but yeah, the haircut and everything and like the way that he kind of like holds himself because mm-hmm. he's stupid tall and he always has some tiny little blonde person opposite him, and so he has to kind of like do that kind of like hunky broody kind of like slouch thing is he really tall yep. i mean he's taller than five foot two well so. yeah fair enough <laughs> he, no, he's six one yeah that is pretty tall yeah it's relatively tall i mean it's not like it's not you know, as tall sam as me dean tall. not as tall as you not as tall as sam and dean no i've had a lucky six foot five no yeah i guess that's true yeah yeah he's yeah a big guy. so Misha Collins, who plays Cass, he's six foot one, and he's like considered the quote unquote short one. That's great. Yeah, because I think Justin said Snack was like six three. Yeah, see, that's why I would fit in with those guys so well. That's why, sure. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, you're Bobby. Don't even fucking doubt it. You're so Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I kind of am. I kind of am. So Bobby, and I'm sorry for anyone who doesn't watch Supernatural. Yeah. Because this will mean nothing to you, but right. also you should definitely go watch Supernatural. It's all on Prime, so you really have no fucking excuse. 
Yeah, I've got a real like uh, I'm trying to help you, you horse's ass kind of vibe. Uh, just say, just say, idiots to me. Come on, listen, you idiots. Is that better? Tell you what, yeah, it's really good. That's yes, you cranked my chain or whatever the fucking phrase is. Cranked yeah. my engine, something. <laughs> I right. don't have a Bobby fetish, but just anything supernatural. It's like <laughs> did w- w- the end of Bobby wasn't like he died what? and they ha- they kept him around as a ghost for a while. There's a mm, there was an episode of like a ghost thing, yeah, and then there was a whole other thing. I don't want to say too much. All right, right, it's been it's already been done, but I know, I know, but mm. (sighs) anyway, back to Valentine. Yeah, so so, but Denise Richards got oh, got a fucking Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl shows up for a hot minute. Renounced the film. Really? Apparently, she hadn't re- like read the entire script and she accepted the role. And then she watched it. At, and went obviously the, the the final cut on it, and she hated it. And like, apparently, in two thousand five, this is according to IMDb. In two thousand five, she was just like, "Yeah, it's a shit film. I don't like it at all." I mean, <laughs> have you seen your other movies? Like, it, hey, I love Twenty Seven Dresses and The Ugly Truth. The uh, rest I cannot speak for. I yeah. I mean, I don't know that. I, I in the in the yeah. oeuvre of Catherine Heigl, I don't know that it's the movie I would single out as like this is the bad one. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's true. You know, like the, the ugly truth. I like the ugly truth. Um, what else? Hold on, let's There's just twenty-seven dresses. But that, that I think there was the what, what was that one where she played like a femme fatale or something or other killers. Like, was, it's not obsession, is it? No. No. Unforgettable. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All right. Well, she's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But she, like, she was in Romy and Michelle in the beginning. You what? know? Yeah. Was she? Yes. She was in Romy and Michelle. No, no, no. She was in a prequel to Romy and wait, Michelle. There was a prequel to Romy and Michelle. There certainly was. Is it fucking awful? I'm sure it is. Yeah, she was in Under is. Siege too. Like again, just keep your mouth shut, at Catherine Heigl. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, you gotta be in the same running as fucking David Brion as you shut your whole mouth. <laughs> right. So <laughs> she, yeah, she was Alexander Breckenridge was the Michelle to her Romy, and Romy and Michelle the beginning or something. Romy mm-hmm. and Michelle in the beginning was the name of it. That's no, no. I'm saying no to it. Yeah, as well you should. Nobody should see this movie. Yeah. No, uh, fucking terrible. Yeah, I've already determined without uh, having seen it or have heard of it t- before two minutes ago. Right. Yeah. I mean, anytime you, it's like uh, uh, when they did um, the uh, prequel movie to butch cassidy and sundance and the sundance kid called butch and sundance the early years no nah. that was a, ma- a straight to tv kind of movie and it's like well, nobody nobody need this no nope. like, didn't hey. need it it's lazy uh-huh and it's not thought out yeah i bet i bet but like yeah no it's just anything where you have to crack on like the beginning the early years like right. the you know it's like there's you, if you cannot think of a better title than that then i i have no faith in your script yeah none you um know? all right so it also the, anyway, this movie right. also uh has marley shelton yeah oh fucking didn't realize it was fucking judy mm-hmm. sheriff judy that's right screen also uh she was dr dakota block in grindhouse and uh Fuck yeah oh my god yeah yes of course oh, fair fucking play yeah and uh she's done well since isn't she? <laughs> yeah uh jessica capshaw who was uh i've never seen an episode of it but she played arizona robbins on gray's anatomy I only mention that because arizona robbins is a terrific name it is she also plays funnily enough david boreana's ex-wife in bones no kidding yep huh I guess I haven't gotten that. She's in it for like I don't know, maybe three or four episodes at most. Oh. But like, yeah, I w- I remember going back. Uh, I remember what? Oh no, I must have watched it. No, yeah, no, I still could have watched it fifteen years ago, and it still be like 
because what but 17 years bones fuck anyway um yeah i'm being like oh shit it's fucking the ex-wife fuck yeah you know as you do um yeah and then uh we got jessica caulfield who was in yeah. legally blonde and urban White legends shit. final cut yep and yeah and then you mentioned katherine heigl and uh yeah, yeah so those, those are the the big ones i didn't go into denise richards because everybody like denise richards from tammy and the t-rex love actually yeah starship troopers mm-hmm. wild I things yeah oh yeah uh wild things do you reckon the do you reckon the the jacuzzi scene is like a bit of a sorry back to wild things just because of like the wet hair and stuff it's... i don't know it just sort of like there was a moment you know when she dives puts her hair back in it and then she just sort of like yeah you know the way you know what i mean like it just kind of like i was just like that looks familiar like the way that i don't know something about that yeah denise richards is like one of those women that you see and you're like that that can't be real yeah you know like she is uh, you know young denise richards was so ridiculously hot yeah that it didn't matter that she wasn't that great an actress it was just like just put her in the movie um yeah and she's not terrible but she's not you know like that's you know, she's my she's favorite there. character in this for sure um by far like by far and i find it interesting that the quote-unquote slutty one mm-hmm. um although i would just argue she's just living her best life mm-hmm. um she's like the strongest the smartest the like you know the more that you know i would just say that like, she's like yeah like she's just the fucking best one by far you know she's loyal and shit i mm-hmm. like her i like her a lot yeah and i don't like how they well especially fucking dickhead dorothy so, yeah well all right so I like slut shames her and shit Ugh, I, I i suppose we should also introduce our theme for this episode which yeah. is j- catty friends like the catty, friends yeah you, you know when you start dating someone when you're in relationships you have those friends that are like i don't think this is a good idea and if they put it that way you're lucky but a lot of times it's just snide behind the hand comments yeah or even just like that like dynamic of that you can't possibly just support each other or whatever (laughs) and that kind of one-upping uh-huh oh it's so fucking toxic and like it's always the one because it's that classic insecurity thing like you know offense is the best defense type thing um and like you know we see with like dorothy and stuff she's the one with a with a hell of a lot of insecurities and so she she feels like the need to speak out the most and um she often targets the person who like targets denise rich's character um fuck what's her name uh page page prescott page right yeah um she like targets Paige the most i feel like throughout like more, the most consistently right um because well, Paige really, has an easy life yeah like she's beautiful she's mm-hmm. smart she gets whatever guy she wants without even really having to try and like you know and she's very confident in herself and on all the things that like dorothy wishes that she could be and like it's just that really like shitty immature thing of like bringing down your friends to try and better yourself and it's just like ugh, you know i'm not here for that i think there are two versions of 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 what we're talking about i i really do and i don't mean to like gender stereotype but i do think there's a difference between female friends and male friends when it comes to this dynamic yeah i'd say that's fair because i think the the male version of this is not you know like undercutting one another and that kind of thing i think it's a Mm. little balder than that Mm. where if you are dating someone that a friend is interested in they will just go after that person you know like the, the the person you're dating they'll just be like hey if i think that my friend is dating out of his league or i just am attracted to the woman that my friend is dating i'm gonna throw like i'm gonna float some test balloons and see if she's into really? it. oh yeah 100 yeah, percent. wow <clears throat> and it, it like it's not you know 
to use the 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 uh bros before ho stereotype here like the reason that is a thing is because it is hardly ever practiced <laughs> you know it is really? oh yeah it's a hundred percent like hey I, as much as i love my friend i don't think either uh, like he, the the woman that my friend is dating is out of his league and i am not or i just also find her incredibly attractive so let's just see what happens huh. yeah it's 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 less sniping and much more like well you know let's just see yeah like may the best man win yeah thing right all sphere in in love and war kind of stuff huh yeah girls are i would say that's like way less toxic i mean yeah that actually thinking back on some stuff that makes sense yep you know like yeah like with like oh like There is um, this guy that um, I dated when I was a teenager and like, I just remember all of his friends, not all of his friends, but like a good chunk of his friends just being like, like one of them actually did make out with me when he knew full well that like Andy was kind of pursuing me Mm -hmm. and it really like threw threw me, but like, I didn't know at that time whether Andy liked me or not. So I was just like, yeah, fair game. (laughs) right yeah yeah and like and nothing ever really happened because i think a week later i did actually get with andy and that was who i wanted really but like um but yeah like and but there was no like even though like they knew there was no animosity there whereas like if that had happened with my friends all hell would have broken loose like oh my god oh my god oh my god yes i'm not i'm not gonna come off very well in the story okay the, these are the best stories that we hear on the show. Bad behavior from Kate is should be its own <laughs> segment. I'm vetoing that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm not going to come up very well, but just this was a while ago and I was young and stupid and hormone driven. Okay, I'm still hormone driven, but I, mm-hmm. I have a bit more of a conscious now. So there was, so, okay, so I had this friendship group at school that kind of like, <clears throat> kept together for a few years after school and like into college and like the first early years of uni and stuff so like we're talking like 19 20 and it was a bunch of girls and we were there was all I mean even at school there was constant drama there was there was never a point where all of us got along at the same time (laughs) there was always like two girls who had fallen out over some bullshit and then there was sides and then a week later someone else sort of had a fight over something else and then that first gripe would be forgotten about and we'd be focusing on that one now like there was never a point where we weren't fighting about something generally i try to not take sides like if someone asked my opinion i'd give it but i wouldn't be like like normally my opinion would just be like this is nothing to do with me and i don't give a shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) which used to just not go down well either so i can fucking win whatever um but um there was one girl who fuck it she's never gonna listen she's called michelle um and um yeah so she was she was one of these people who had do you know what she was kind of like dorothy she had um a lot of insecurities um for no real fucking reason to be fair but like she was really tall and had quite a boyish figure she's now a model um so it's not like she was ugly or anything um but she just was a bit like insecure because she had this very kind of like you know very narrow frame Mm -hmm. and she was very tall and um guys generally didn't like her because of that but at the same time though she was really like obnoxious Mm mm-hmm and like kind of just would put out this air of like i'm the shit and not in a way of confidence it was just like an arrogance thing and she would just like do the thing of like putting her friends down to make herself feel better like at school i always was i mean i was never really i've never been a very skinny person um but i always had like boobs and hips and an hourglass figure that kind of went to my favor and she would just sort of make snide comments about my weight and stuff um 
because presumably it would make her feel better about the fact that we had complete opposite body types but obviously it made me feel like shit because like I was still a teenager and very sensitive about like my image and whatever Mm -hmm. um anyway so but she kind of did that a lot with like like various other things and so she would be very nice but she would never come out and flat out be a cunt she would just be snide comments or and she'd just go oh I'm only joking you know so anyways she really liked this guy Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh so there's about six of us in this friendship group and she really liked this guy had done for ages and um but she would never do anything about it and we would just have to like hear about it mm-hmm. and hear all the whinging and like oh but he's not looking like and like and she would just she would just bitch and bitch and bitch and never do anything about it so we all took it in turns to sleep with him oh wow okay and told her and we kind of did a look how easy it is so but was that the intent of like hey it's not a big deal we've all no, t- we, we've wanted all to, we, wa- we wanted to knock her down a few pounds okay okay because she would kind of like give us shit mm-hmm and like to her own taunt, uh, to your own horn, which is fine. Like not giving a shit, but like if you want to, you know, fucking back yourself, hundred percent, go for it. But don't put your friends down on it, and then put yourself at this lofty height, and then, but then have like, don't don't back yourself to the point where you'll actually do something to benefit yourself, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so we were just like, well, fuck it. <laughs> we'll just like it was kind of like it wasn't all in one night or anything. It was over the span of a few weeks. Um, but like, yeah, we all took turns to sleep with him. And then we were just like, yeah, so we got there first. Do you still want him? I like the fact, too, that, you know, from this guy's perspective, he's just like, I have the most game of any man alive. <laughs> Every time I would turn around, somebody is just throwing snatch at me. Yeah. The, I mean... <laughs> yeah the other thing was though is that i hooked up with him at a party and i'd been drinking vodka milkshakes uh-huh and i was on top i was i think you've told us this the... us so, this is the guy yeah and i threw up on him yeah yeah, yeah. all right well you know it's not, yeah I've, I've got a few vomit stories but um i guess <laughs> the consolation prize is that he was having sex with a bunch of other people too so yeah i mean not in that one uh, uh maybe one other in that one night but wow. yeah i'm pretty I yeah, but it was fine. We fucking knew about it. So, um, but like, ah, uh, did she walk? No, I don't think she did. She walk in. I was so drunk. I if I'm a memory that she might have even walked in. <laughs> I don't even remember. Honestly, there, it was so long ago, and I was so drunk. There is there is no greater insult to injury than walking in to see your friend having sex with a person that you have a crush on, who then throws up know. on that person. <laughs> And then doesn't even remember whether you walked in or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. She, I'm pretty sure because I remember she was pissy with me the next day, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. It's fucking ages ago. But yeah, uh, we did that and I threw up on him. Mm. You see, I'm so classy. <laughs> but see, are the, the you know, as as like amoral as guys are when it comes to like the pursuit of a woman. Yeah. There is this weird code of like, okay, if you've been with her, my interest level has decreased 3,000%. You know? Yeah, it, I think it, that's true for girls as well. Like, okay. Which is kind of, yeah, it was kind of like, that was part of the thing. It was kind of like you snooze, you lose. Like fucking yeah. shit will get off the pot kind of thing. Like, as if you don't, <laughs> we're all going to fucking insist. <laughs> you know? Whether we want to or not. Whether we want to or not. I mean, he wasn't a bad looking guy. It wasn't like, you know, oh no. Nobody was holding their nose. A, yeah, like no one was like, you know, oh, you know what? Just do me from behind. It's fine. You know, like, it was, yeah, he was, he was, I think, he, I think he was a good, oh, shit, what was his name? Oh, hey, dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mentioned doggy style and the dog pipes. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, he's like, yeah, you're talking about me. Yeah, he's talking about me. Uh, yeah, I can't even remember his name. I want to say it was Marcus, but I think I don't think that was right. That's terrible, isn't it? Oh well. Hey, look, look I, there are plenty of people 
from the past that's like I kind of remember like I remember the face I don't remember the name I I don't remember either like I remember thinking he was fit he probably wasn't my taste back then was terrible mm. like it was like proper fuck boy like you know revs his engine too loud and <laughs> all of that plays plays his music too loud and yeah, yeah, yeah like you know that kind of guy like yeah i was if he, if he looked like a drug addict i was in you know oh really like uh it's like if you look like you were from the cast of uh train spotting yeah yeah that maybe not quite that bad but like but you know train spot in the early years <laughs> you know? um that's funny uh yeah Thanks. i <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the, I mean that—that's raw. Uh, the way that you you treated this friend of yours, like no getting around that. Yeah, no. Yeah, but also I mean, she's fine now. She's engaged in a fucking model living in Australia. Like she's fine. If anything, she's welcome because maybe we gave her the kick up the ass to fucking go live her life. Well, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Yeah, I was about to say I wouldn't go patting yourself on the back just yet. <laughs> like, good on us for g- giving her the motivation she needed. Look, what works works, okay? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you I know, told you I wasn't going to come up well in this story. Well, I, yeah, you know, look, you, you were young. I don't think that anybody makes the best and most responsible decisions at that age. So it is, no, you know. They don't. Yeah, I mean, does <laughs> is is it the best behavior? Of course not, but you know, it ain't that bad in the grand scheme of things. All my nobody friends were doing it. It wasn't my fault, you know. Ah, I was told well, it, was, just... it was. I told it. I was told it was cool and clever. So, yeah, what the... was I supposed to do? I was just young and impressionable. <laughs> I definitely didn't rally it. <laughs> right, I I was following orders. That is not. A no, great it was defense. my idea. I really didn't like her. Um. <laughs> uh <laughs> so valentine Such a dickhead, i'm sorry <laughs> yeah valentine <laughs> so here's the thing we'll we'll get back to caddy friends in a minute but um the thing that's interesting to me about this movie is how of its time it is it feels it has all the moves of a slasher movie Mm-hmm. But it is that m- mid '90s to mid 2000s kind of slasher where yeah. it's real glossy. Um, you know, you have your opening kind of scream moment with Catherine Hyde. Well, actually, the first thing you get is poor Jeremy Melton going girl to girl at this middle school dance. Yeah. Uh, like hey will you dance with me and everybody be like no you're disgusting (laughs) and and it's it's dorothy right that finally dances with him and you know because she's kind of a a chunky girl and so she the fat shaming in this film it's just oh i just it's such a film of its time oh yeah yeah. (laughs) it's yeah it's crazy hell fat is equated with being an outcast no 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 absolutely not <laughs> is it like is if fat was being like i mean aside from potential health issues but in terms of like what they're bothered about fat is as if that's an issue but the fact that she's not even fat even if it were an issue she's not even fat right right oh fucking 2000s at, at worst you might call her big boned yeah well she gets called. you were big boned i love how kate says this like the main character like, you were just big boned like as though your bones like get smaller as you get older you know <laughs> like <laughs> that's not how that works um but yeah no like it's i mean puppy fat if anything mm-hmm. well yeah right? i mean yeah you see chubby kids all the time that you're like i look could they grow up to be fat maybe but also they could grow up to be like your friend like they could grow up to be a model you can't tell like if you're in elementary and middle school you you're just like you haven't grown into your body yet no and what kids call a glow up you're right yeah 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 and so, right? so i'll put that on the board um <laughs> you give somebody extra sure credit for that yeah uh but in yeah in this movie they're like as soon as she starts dancing with this guy they're like oh my god 
fatty fatty two by four is dancing with jeremy melted the gross kid yeah well they're making out aren't they they're making out under the bleachers yeah, but they kiss like twice it's not you know nobody's well, going after it. they're like sitting they're like sitting there and making out and shit they're just doing that dumb fast kissing that kids think you'd have to do yeah yeah it's, it's really cringe yeah and but the, yeah the kids see him and are just like look at these kids they're disgusting and dorothy is like no no uh he forced himself on me and she's just the worst from the get-go isn't she, she you're, yeah she's terrible and then she is like all of these kids strip poor jeremy melton mm. and beat the shit out of him and but importantly we see that his nose starts bleeding. Yeah. Because that's going to be a thing. And... <laughs> but and, and yeah. then you, like... What happens to this poor kid? He gets expelled. Has to go to a reform school and juvenile hall. Because mm -hmm. all these other kids were like, Hey, he he was assaulting Dorothy. Yeah. and And so the, like end of the story for jeremy melton at least in the this part of the film is that yep. he ends up going to the giggle factory yep and all these kids just go on with their lives so yeah you know it is it's a good like a slasher movie setup because you're like oh that jeremy melton kid he's gonna terror train the shit out of these kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for and, sure and so, and sure enough, like there's uh, uh, 13 years after that, that happened in 88. So it mm -hmm. could have been me. That could have been me. I was born in 88, so it definitely couldn't have been me. Yeah, I was, I was of the age. Like I could have been, I could have been Jeremy Melton <laughs> in a different world. Could have been. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you weren't though. I mean, me too. The nose yeah. bleeds alone. Right. It's just impractical. <laughs> right yeah you never wear white or you shouldn't but david boreanaz does oh spoiler oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, uh, well, this movie's 21 years old you know there might be some people who haven't watched it right <laughs> spoilers 21 years old fuck yeah this movie can drink now although not rent a so car that david boreanaz is in like is in his 50s yeah probably still throwing it around though well uh, i don't think so anymore after that out of court settlement what happened i don't i like i don't know anything about latter day david boreanaz uh well this wasn't even that latter day it was during angel <clears throat> um no it wasn't it was during bones sorry um yeah like while he was married and they're still married um to his playboy model wife mm -hmm. i'm sorry that was very misogynistic or something of me to objectify her like that but i literally don't know her name or anything else about her mm -hmm. so um but anyway yeah so um he apparently while well, it's just a role of bones um propositioned shall we say one of the uh guest actresses um and just assaulted her or something or or tried it on with her it was all kind of like very much hushed up um mm -hmm. and it was like he i think he tried it on with her and stuff and basically said like if you fuck me then um i'll get you like a reoccurring role or i don't know something like that Ooh. yeah well, no not it's, it's not great it's not great um and then <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then um she was like well no and also fuck you <laughs> And I'm suing. Um, and then it got settled out of court and his wife never left him. And he's apologized and did a stint in, I think he did a stint or something or other in like some sort of sex rehab something. Sure, sure. I'm a sex ad addict. Let me go away for 30 yeah, days. Now yeah, better. yeah. Um, but there's been literally nothing else before since or around it it was just this one thing and not that i'm not justifying it at like at all but like it, it sure. could well be that he has genuinely just he was just a fucking idiot with too much power on his hands and saw a pretty actress and thought he'd take a shot 
um, which is not, again, not justifying, not okay, especially when you're married and especially when you're in a position of power. But, um, you yeah, know, hopefully he's learned his lesson. And also Sam Shogel is still friends with him. And I like to think that she has a moral compass. Sure. And sure. apparently, sure, sure, sure. Um, what's the face fucking who plays Kate in this is still good friends with him nowadays as well. Oh, yeah. Right. So, well, I mean, fingers crossed he's, he's, he's a good egg. Right, that you like he's just, right. he's just like had made, a, made some, some bad, bad decisions, decisions but, but it's like yeah. a one-time thing, and he's learned his lesson and stuff. Hopefully, fingers crossed. You know, people can change. I'm choosing to believe that though, because Joss Whedon is already fucking. He's he's that's enough bullshit associated with Buffy, love of my life. So sure, but there's all these articles coming out lately where Sarah Michelle Geller, SMG, as we know her, um coming out and talking about like yeah the the uh set of buffy could be toxic sometimes um but i'm really proud of the role and what it meant yeah so when all that stuff with joss whedon came out she put a thing and to be fair like anyone who follows sir michelle Geller at all like she doesn't really do interviews she doesn't really do press junkets she doesn't do comic con she doesn't she's very much kind of like i do the job and i do the role and i go home to my family and i you know that's Mm -hmm. that and um but when like and she also like the only time she's ever really got political as well she doesn't doesn't tend to sort of like get political about stuff but when like trump was in power and she was just like just go fucking vote for anyone else but trump um and um and like every now and then but generally she kind of keeps things sort of very neutral um but when the whole stuff with joss whedon came out she was like yeah basically like I, yeah, this stuff, like, went on. Um, I do not condone it. I'm really proud of everyone who's spoken up. I am still extremely proud of the role, but that role is not Joss Whedon. And I will not associate with Joss Whedon. And I, and she basically, like, separated herself entirely from Joss Whedon. But it's essentially, like, separating the art from the artist. Like, she, she loves the show. She loves the role, what it's done for, like, pop culture and women and strong female, like inspiration and all that kind of stuff proud of the people who came forward um she didn't have like anything happen to her but like Mm -hmm. knew of it but wasn't like essentially i guess felt she was in a position or brave enough to be able to kind of like stand up although you could argue (laughs) mate the show doesn't fucking happen without you so you could maybe have done something but she was still only what 19 20 you know right 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 i mean a child yeah himself, like yeah. you know and this is your first big major role and stuff and you know you maybe feel like you owe joss i don't know whatever but like yeah she wasn't she wasn't supporting joss whatsoever at all but she was very much kind of like look i still believe in what buffy stands for and that was the role of a lifetime and i'm very proud of the work that i've done yeah. you know yeah everything that yeah everything that she's she said recently because she's on that wolfpack yeah. show and has done you know some some more interviews around that but even her like just calling out like yeah all these marvel movies that came out with female leads and people you know like piling on those movies she was like yeah i I get it like that happened with buffy as well and you know like people are not there there is a subset of people who see a movie featuring a strong female lead and are threatened by that yeah so yeah. but yeah hopefully um, David Boreanaz has learned his lesson though and um yeah because I can't have like I fucking love Angel I'm sorry yeah <laughs> so oh right right so b- back to uh this movie though so what happens is uh you you flash forward and uh Catherine Heigl gets uh a, a little poison pen pal message yeah um when she's at at work and late at night in the morgue by herself which i don't i this is one of those things i'm like i don't know if you're allowed to do that i think no i think you, you can know? Um, well, i say this i don't know this is all i know of movies but it seems like anyone who works in a morgue often works late at night by themselves you know no one else around like but she's also like she's like letting off some steam i think after the shitty fucking date with jason yeah. Who speaks to him first himself <laughs> yeah. in the fucking third person, but you know, that's cool. Um, yeah, so she's kind of like, oh, fuck this guy, so let's go fuck, like, cut up some dead people. This is a mood, and to be fair, yeah. it's a vibe. Yeah. And 
she ends up getting stalked and eventually murdered by a guy in a trench coat and a cupid yeah mask. which is fucking creepy it's a pretty good mask yeah yeah yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, when i watched um happy death day it reminded me of it oh yeah yeah, yeah. same and the one thing that we see from this uh this killer is that um a- as he's murdering Catherine heigl his nose yeah. bleeds from uh from under the mask so we're like ah oh, this is jeremy yeah. melton yeah, yeah. we know it's jeremy melton it's just like but who is jeremy melton and there yeah. it lies the mystery so friends <laughs> right the the giallo esque yeah. mystery of valentine even though it's not that mysterious well, cuz there's only yeah, like oh no it two I people mean, when i first watched it at the ripe age of fucking what 13 it come, like this it's one per it's one person you know it's going to be one person mm-hmm. um but apparently um oh this is a film that apparently like got hacked into by the studios um I was like looking up some IMDb triff and um, yeah, basically like Justin, what's his face wanted to make it much more of a giallo murder mystery. Um, And Mm -hmm. there was so many deleted scenes that would have like answered a lot of plot holes or questions that that are kind of unanswered and stuff like that. And um, yeah, he wanted to make it this sort of much less of a slasher and more of a mystery um but the studio's like nope slashes are in we've got scream we've got i know we did last summer you've just done urban legend let's give us some more of that you know and then they made him cut a bunch out because it was too violent and they wanted to get that nice juicy r rating instead of an n17 um and so there was a lot of violence which would have been included and it also included a fair amount of plot which they just had to cut right like the backstory of what happened to jeremy why he went after the girls and not the guys except he did go after the guys but it would have been too bloody to show it and there was yeah um like all of this stuff so yeah it's a studio's fault basically like this movie could have been a lot better than what it was and not that it's bad i I have a lot of fun with this film it's a fucking fun slasher but like it could have had a bit more credence should should the uh studios have backed off yeah, and it's probably worth saying like this was based on a book. Um, you know, that there is a novel out there that might, you know, have more like MacGuffins and red herrings and you know, be more of a mystery. Yeah, I heard that they, it was it was the title that they based it on, but it wasn't really so much so of the story itself. I'm I could have that wrong. I don't know. You probably know more than I do too. Um, so So, well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> but so you've got all the 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 girls that are friends of Catherine yeah. Heigl, which you know are the ones that that we mentioned up front. There's Kate, uh, Lily, Paige, and Dorothy. Mm-hmm. And Dorothy was the former fat yep. girl, or again, you know, in mm-hmm. quotes. Uh, Paige is Denise Richards. Yep. Um, He's the kind of Kate is the one, one that's. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh Kate is the one who we will find out is dating Adam. David Boreanaz. Yeah. Adam. Adam. And then Lily is just kind of the other one. Yeah, she's just like the kind of the Aquarius of the group. And I don't mean that disparagingly being that I am also an Aquarius, but she's the one who's kind of like she's dating an art guy, like like an artist, and she's a bit flaky and she's a bit like, ah, oh, you know. Um so yeah like she's like the fun one Liv- uh, so Lily's the fun one Denise Richards is like the sexy one and like whatever and then you've got the quote unquote fat one but I would argue she's the rich one and then um, mm-hmm. yeah you've got Kate who's like the girl next door you know homegrown gonna be a soccer mum when she gets older kind of thing yeah yeah. I, 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 I like the fact in the uh, funeral scene that everyone is just like look at Paige sitting there with her tits out <laughs> for this funeral <laughs> which is not unfair like she is wearing a sexy funeral dress yeah but also sometimes you just can't and, fucking help that shit like it's an owner of big boobs like you could wear a polo neck and people will still make a fucking comment well but this was pretty low cut for <laughs> this was no polo <laughs> yeah no it was it was pretty good <laughs> Uh, but anyway, but it also kind of sets up Paige's character as being like, so what? Like, yeah. you know, 
let's throw a little chum in the water see what <laughs> see what's biting today um but they're all getting these uh cards signed jm mm. and nobody thus far has put together like this might be jeremy no because why would you it's this kid you've not thought about in about 13 years or whatever so right um there's the the box of chocolates where there are a bunch of maggots in the candy that one's yeah, pretty, pretty good in the... oh, oh. <coughs> Um, but so the first big death, I guess, is uh, aside from Catherine Heigl, is Lily. Yeah, because they, there's the big art exhibit with her her boyfriend. Such a tool. And yeah, he's he's a real piece of garbage. Um, and and there's one kind of red herring that goes away pretty quickly, or just isn't a big enough deal in the movie to think that this is actually the killer. But it's the ex girlfriend of this art dude campbell named ruthie who's like hey this guy's a um a flim flam man this guy's just here to get all your money yeah, that's not lily's boyfriend though that's dorothy's boyfriend uh, dorothy's right yeah, right, no, right. This guy's yeah, then he does right. have this girl who turns up and he's just like oh yeah basically i thought we'd have a three-way hasn't told lily that this is his plan she just turns up and starts like unbuttoning her shirt and getting all hot and heavy watching them make out and whatever and like and lily's yeah. just like the fuck not like no like what the fuck i don't know this guy I don't, like, didn't talk, like get fucked um and so the girl kind of just like stalks off um and she's just like yeah i'm going on my trip bye kind of thing um rightly pissed off um and then she gets gun guided but yeah like the ruthie chick she turns up in a bit because like it's after campbell's turned up on dorothy's doorstep saying basically i'm homeless give me your money <laughs> and your nice pad yeah. your shag pad um and um but like you know i'll make doe eyes at you and you're just that insecure that you'll just eat up that bait basically but yeah lily gets some um, shot by cupid's arrow yeah well and this is maybe my favorite sequence of the movie where she's kind of wandering around this art installation with these images, the very sexy mm -hmm. images of close up mouths and stuff. And like everything's constantly shifting. Like it's a big maze. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of, um, what's the word? Like the fucking, what's the fucking thing? You know, you get on like cereal packets where it's like, what's the, where it changes images. Oh, like uh, magic eyes. Yeah, stuff? like you know when you like look at it one way and it looks like something, and you look at it another way, it's like another thing. You know, yeah, like, yeah, I can't yeah. remember the fucking term is, but yeah, like you get the the, the cards with the on. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's all that kind of shit. Yeah, I do know what you're. I don't know the name for it either, <laughs> I but I know what you're talking about. about. Yeah. Um, but but I, I I think all of that is really stylish and cool, and then her getting shot with the arrows, and then just kind of tumbling down this stairwell thing, you know, like of these like apartments. Yeah warehouse block and she ends up in the trash yeah. right <laughs> yeah and this massive big like what are they called grundon bins or something like the ones that like you put like the industrial waste in and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. thing just nicely neatly just the lid just closes on her and but because L lily was going on this work mm. trip all her friends are like oh she must have just taken off and yeah you know she's out yeah, of especially if boyfriend's like yeah she got shitty with me and walked off and left. she's gone home and now she's just gone on this trip logic right but then the cop <laughs> and then the cops show up though and they're like hey what about your friend lily and they're like uh she's on a trip or something and they're like no she's not yeah and they're like oh you know what i bet it's this kid jeremy melton that we knew from middle school or whatever. Yeah, because they're like running names, aren't they? Because like before she gets killed, like her and Denise Richards are like running names, going like, "Oh, do you, what about him? What about him?" Basically, it's just running a list of all the J's that like Denise Richards that I've slept with. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's great. But where she's like, where like Paige is like, "Why would it be one of my exes? What about one of your exes?" And then like Lily's just like, "Because you've covered more of the alphabet than I have." <laughs> Well, and the the thing I also really like about this is that Dorothy comes clean. Yeah. At this point and is like, "Hey, um just not for nothing, but he didn't actually assault me in any yeah. way. 
I was just embarrassed to be caught with him. And they're like, well, then of course it's him. Yeah. Like that guy went to a m- mental institution because of all the things we said about yeah. him because you lied about this. Yeah, but like weirdly though, they don't really seem that mad about it. Like if that was, if one of my friends turned around and said, yeah, sorry, I cried rape on someone or even not maybe rape, but just like, you know, I, I falsely accused someone of sexual assault that then ruined his life. Um and I never came clean about it or anything. And I, you know, never told any way, but I'd just be like, uh-huh. Yeah. Probably not going to be friends with you much longer. You know, like, and they're also like, oh, babe. Oh. Right. Like, it, really? Well, and Dorothy's like, I was really insecure and et cetera, et cetera, because all of you, all of you bitches were calling me fat all the time. <laughs> and well, at least that's what she thinks. Cause I don't think they did. Like, I don't think, I mean, maybe <laughs> Paige might have done, but like, I don't think like, I don't know. I can't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just her feeling insecure. It wasn't like actually. I don't know. Maybe they don't show. They don't like show her being bullied or anything by them. Eh, maybe. Um, Whatever. Yeah, I don't. Felt, I don't. But you know, but still, it's not an excuse to fucking falsely accuse someone. So, right, right. And so they're like, oh, maybe it's this guy. And they're like, well, and the, the cops are like, well, we don't know where that guy yeah. is. So, you know, whenever he left this mental institution, he seems to have fallen off the face of the yeah. earth. And they kind of bring up the possibility and, of like plastic surgery and and whatever. And they start questioning right. Adam and they start questioning Campbell. And Dorothy gets real fucking defensive. And they're like, yeah, but you met him like a month ago, randomly in your yoga class. And oh, by the way, you let him live with you and you don't even know his last name. It could maybe be Campbell. You know? Yeah. And this guy is using you. Also, the guy, I'm sorry, looks like he's had a ton of plastic surgery on his face. Like, can we talk about, apart from David Brianna's and like the artist guy, who's quite fit too, all of the guys, whether it's like bit roles or like sort of, you know, larger characters, they are the weirdest looking guys. They all just look so plastic, <laughs> like like Ken gone wrong. You know? They're very LA looking guys. Plastic surgery, told you. So yeah, like the, um, so yeah, Campbell being Jeremy is like, it does look pretty, pretty good for Jeremy right now. Well, up until he gets brained with an axe. <laughs> yeah. And um, and also, can I, like, this is one of the things I actually really like about this film is how all the kills are so different. You know, mm-hmm. like, they're very resourceful. You know, he doesn't really bring a weapon of choice. He just kind of picks up whatever's around and it's like, yeah, this will do. I'll smash a guy's head in with a fucking iron. Yeah. You know? Well, except the, the bow and arrow. Know, that, that makes was... sense because Cupid, but, <clears throat> but yeah, but then yeah. he's lost all his arrows in her. So he's then, he's like, well, fuck, what else do I use? Oh, cool. There's a jacuzzi with like a power drill just casually lying around. <laughs> those are my, those are my two favorites. The, the jacuzzi and the, um, the art installation yeah. were the two that I thought were the most fun. I thought the axe thing was fine. Like I think those those two kills are really good. I think everything else is one degree of okay or another. Well, they're kind of those are the ones that are more prolonged. But I just yeah, I quite yeah, like yeah. though just generally like how it's just it's different weapons being used every time. I just don't really know another film where it does that. Whereas literally it's something different every single time. Yeah, the iron is pretty good. Cause there there's a dude we could talk about briefly. A guy named Gary. That's uh, Kate's ah. neighbor that bus a new replace to steal her underwear so he can yeah, wear it. It's just such a weird side fucking thing, but it's so funny. Also though, the oh, the amount of time But as soon as he dies, you're like, well it's gotta be David Boreanaz then because that's the only one who would care that this dude was stealing her underwear. A hundred percent. Is can we just talk as well? Because he does the whole Hey Kate, you look great, Kate. Let's go on a date, Kate. It must be fake, mm, Kate. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how fucking many people fucking said that to me when i was at school when this came out because this was like the film that you crack oh, on, really like you crack on at a sleepover or whatever you know because it's kind of like a fun teen slasher thing and you've watched scream uh-huh. god knows how many times so this was like the new one plus it had david boreanaz in it so you know and then yeah but then it just meant that everyone was going hey kate you're running late kate you look great kate i'm like oh my god yeah i get it my name is fucking right easily rhymed with just get fucked <laughs> i never even thought about that but you're right yeah well all right listeners no 
no no you, you know what yeah, not no, to do, do not. Yeah, yeah you're right 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 no this is not this an, is invitation not an invitation to... um although my right. on a side note if i was gonna um have a drag name it would be thorny cake Ooh, thorny yeah, cake's really good yeah uh tm 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 um so uh that it has its advantages should i ever want to get into the drag world um but otherwise it's just annoying yep yeah huh. i'm now i'm thinking what my drag name oh, really? would be. um yeah edna allen bow <laughs> yeah edna allen bow nailed it first try 100 percent. yeah yeah I, I would be the goth yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you'd be like the artsy one from New York or whatever, like a bit gothic, mm -hmm. and like. But you'd be like upstate New York, where everything's a bit like dramatic and whatever. Oh, yeah, sure. and you have legacy and shit. Your old money, darling. You know, that's right. That's right. The Kate Blanchett of the drag circuit. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anyway, I'm definitely <laughs> the Vegas one. Like, or like, uh, yeah. What's the yeah? Probably a Vegas one. Where I'm just a little bit nasty. Um, no, they're showgirls Vegas, aren't they? Where's the one that's like? Is it Seattle? Seattle. I'll be a Seattle one. There we go. Oh yeah, Seattle. That that's the yeah, grunge. I'd I'd do that. I'll be I'll be down for that. Mm. Yeah, that's that's plenty yeah. sexy Look, grungy ladies they are, are sexy. having a resurgence anyway yeah so mm -hmm. um where are we at we've got fucking death and shit we've got fucking iron death with the neighbor trying on her underwear and it's a big fucking yeah arrow at a cupid's arrow at and then there, so, <laughs> and then dorothy is like hey i'm gonna have this big party at my yeah. place at my fancy <laughs> upstate estate yeah. and that's when, like, right before that happens, that's when Campbell gets murdered with the axe. And everybody's like, oh, Campbell took off. Well, yeah, and... because he's now, like, had this ex come to light saying, like, oh, he's just a big gold digger kind of thing. And he's scamming me with these, like, you know, quote unquote investments or whatever. And, you know, and then he, she confronts Dorothy and says, hey, that's my necklace. He stole it from me kind of thing. So, no, it's a gift. And at this point, I'm just so fucking yeah, and, done with Dorothy. I'm just like, oh, everything you do and say is annoying. <laughs> and then, uh, like, Dorothy was the one I kind of related oh, sorry, to a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. No, uh, I I related to her because I like the fact that she was like, I all I've ever wanted to do is fit in with you people, and you've never let me. Oh, and no, no, no. But also, they totally do. Yeah. Yeah. you know like she has it she wrong does. she really does and because she gives this whole speech about like you know you're all just jealous of me because i'm rich and successful but you also look at me as the fat girl and everybody's like so what like you're fine like we're all coming to your party we'll get over yeah, yourself like, no one thinks those things no one's judging you for your weight and no one's jealous of your wealth like no yeah. one cares we just think you're cool and we want to be your friend so yeah get over yourself like she's just so full of self-pity and it's just oh so annoying yeah and so then they go to the the the, the actual party night happens and that's kind of the last act of the mm -hmm. movie really is um ruthie shows up drunk yeah and is like that guy is a scammer you giving him too much money glug yeah. glug and she makes some and pretty then... personal comments about her as well including her like image and things like she says like oh yeah no he's definitely he's not in love with you and, or something and he's just like yeah he's definitely not in love with you and gives her the, like, the up down and it's just like oh all right then yeah which kind of i think partly fuels and... dorothy's rage mm-hmm and then she ends up getting murdered by our Cupid killer. Yeah, this is a good one as well. By getting, yeah, she gets thrown through a, a window. Yeah, in this downstairs and, spa. Yeah, that you just casually have and, <laughs> right, and gets you know her neck cut on the the glass. Yeah, he like there. shoves it down. It's a good bit because like she's obviously struggling to keep her head up, and he just like, nah, bitch bam and just like mm -hmm. slices it right through her fucking car or whatever it's called it's fucking right yeah, in the vein 
then we've got the the page death, the Denise Richards death, which is also really uh, good. Before we get to that, can we just talk about her fucking immense fucking scene with the guy in the bed? Oh yeah, right. Uh, when, this is yeah. just mm, the mm, wax. Yeah, like so you know, and like fair play. I think like this is why I like her character because this is like you know year. Two, this is made in the year two thousand, released two thousand one women's sexuality was really like i know that it wasn't as repressed as it used to be but like there was definitely stigma about women who enjoyed sex and like you know sexual freedom and stuff for women was definitely like if you were having like a lot of sex you were seen as a slut and all the rest of it and i really like Paige because she fucking owns her identity and she owns her sexuality but she doesn't just give it around to anyone like she does have standards she does stand up for herself and like She's just very sure of like who she is, what she wants and what she deserves. And so she's like been given the eyes at this guy that she met at a speed dating thing. She invites him along and they're like dancing or whatever. And he's like, hey, I've got a surprise for you. And she's like, oh, yeah, really? Mm -hmm. And then so they go to the bedroom and then he's like, sit on the bed. And she's like, oh, OK. And then he just takes down his trousers and just whips out his cock. And he's just like, surprise, baby. And then she's just like, the fuck? Like, and she's just like, really? Mm -hmm. This, she's like, wow, you brought me up here to show me your penis, you know? Like, and he's just looking so fucking pleased with himself, as though he's the first guy to have ever done that. Like, she's never seen a dick as glorious as his, and like, she's so welcome for the privilege that is his penis, and she's just like, bro. And then, like, so she goes to walk out, and he starts getting all shitty or whatever, and then so she's like, ah, okay then, and then like tries it all on and everything and she's like hey lie on the bed baby kind of thing like yeah I want this kind of thing and she ties him up and he's like oh yeah I knew you're a kinky bitch the moment I saw you and he's just all being fucking misogynistic and horrible and fucking cringe as shit and then like so she's tying him up and that's right because he goes yeah because he whips his dick out and he's just like wax it baby and she's just like you fucking what and like for anyone who doesn't know wax it because I swear to god I've never heard that expression outside of this film it essentially means blowjob. So anyway, she's like, do you still want me to wax it, baby? And she's like blindfolded him and shit. And he's like, oh my God, yeah. And in this bedroom, just so happens that there's all these candles lit and she takes this massive fuck off candle and then just like pours it, the wax straight on his penis, leaving him screening. And then she just walks off and leaves the door wide open with him still tied up. And it's just like, yeah. It's mm-hmm. fucking great. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Yes. She's fucking awesome and she's my hero. Yeah, and it, like I said, it's a, the, my second favorite death of the movie where she is, you know, <laughs> rightly congratulating herself afterwards <laughs> by having a so glass of champagne. As well. She's like, you know what? I'm going to go off and I'm going to fucking chill and not be around anyone. <laughs> yeah, and is hanging out, having champagne, um, hears somebody come in and ends up... Uh, being trapped in the hot tub by the glass cover mm-hmm. or the plastic cover. And then our killer gets this big drill from nowhere and starts, right. <laughs> starts drilling through the plastic to, you know, at one point cuts her yeah. arm and you're like, ah, oh, well she's going to get drilled in the head or yeah. something. Oh, contraire. Mm-hmm. And instead he just kicks the plastic cover off and tosses the drill into the hot tub uh electrocuting her which also does double duty for knocking the lights out on the Mm -hmm. party sending everyone home so that right everybody's like well lights are out we're gonna leave and you know but so dorothy is still hanging out um kate is still hanging out and but this, the, that's the main kinda, gang yeah. is just, I mean, who's still surviving of it anyway? And Adam's gone off because, yeah. like, he's um, a three week sobered guy, and like him and Kate have been on and off because of like his drinking. And he's like, no, 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 proper clean. I've been clean for three weeks. I'm on the program. I'm doing the twelve steps. It's all fucking great. And she's like, okay, well, we'll take it slow, but uh, yeah, I do kind of like you, and we'll see what happens if you're gonna get. And then she finds him drinking at this party, and they have this big kind of fallout. And so she storms off, and he's kind of like MIA because it's like, oh, he's off drunk and whatever and all like oh i don't want to fuck this up kind of thing i love you and all this and she's like nah fuck off mate and um yeah and so like so he's still there kind of like licking his wounds so to speak kind of thing and then we got dorothy 
and Kate. And I think that's it, isn't it? That's just the survivors. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and the, like they, Kate and Dorothy end up arguing about who the killer yeah, is. Yeah, because they're blaming each other's boyfriends. Right. And so ultimately, Kate calls the detective that has been, you know, calling, like investigating this um, case. Uh, harassing and when she does Richards, that, horrifically and cringely. Ugh. Yeah. And she hears a ringtone. And so she follows that outside and finds his severed head in the pond. <laughs> and so she goes back and at this point, she thinks that Adam, AKA David Boreanaz is Jeremy yeah. who has had plastic surgery, yeah. runs back into the house, finds him there and he's drunk and asks her to dance. Yeah. And then she's like, holy shit, you were the killer. I got to run. She, she starts running through mm -hmm. the house, finds Dorothy's room has been trashed, but no sign of Dorothy. Yeah. And then finds the, the bodies of both Denise Richards and this girl, yeah. Ruthie. And she, she finds a gun, but as she picks up the gun, like the, the killer jumps out of nowhere and they both go falling down the staircase yeah. and the you know we see the killer gets up and then adam from out of nowhere has the gun and shoots the murderer yeah. and you're like what yeah. who is this and there's right. this really like so drawn they... out moment where he removes the mask right and it's dorothy <gasps> what right and you're like oh my god it was dorothy the whole time only not nope. really <coughs> i was this with a friend because... who'd never seen it before and she was like what mm. the hell i don't understand but that doesn't make sense and i was like let's just fucking watch the film like <laughs> yeah you'll see and and so kate of course is like oh david boreanaz i'm so sorry for ever having accused you're so you dreaming. i'm just gonna forget and... that you went off the wagon for fucking no reason whatsoever and just hold me in your big strong family arms i can't blame right. that honestly and, I and he's blame that. well i mean who can i would like to be held in david boreanaz's strong yeah, arms me too. and you know but he tells her like hey childhood trauma is a real bitch mm. and that she probably because of you guys calling her fat all those years she finally yeah. snapped and and lashed out yeah. and you know meanwhile like hey let's call the police we're done with this and while they're waiting for the police to show up she like you know throws herself into his arms and he's like i'm here i'll protect you i love you i've always loved you yeah she's the and only one kate... who wasn't mean to him right yeah she was the yeah. good girl and then as soon as she closes her eyes we see that his nose starts bleeding and and basically the the idea is that he put dorothy in the killer costume yeah. after knocking her out she wakes up yeah. and is like you know doesn't take off the mask which is foolish but whatever and then you know has basically set her up to take the fall for all the murdering mm -hmm. he did and now he gets the girl and, live happily ever and after. you know well until you know he gets cuckoo for cocoa puffs again <laughs> in the valentine 2 sequel that never yeah. happened <laughs> but yeah it's basically valentine and um it is a raucous splatterific raunch fest <laughs> you know i i when you pitched this movie, I was like, you know, I don't remember liking it very much. And on a rewatch, I liked it a ton more than I did the first time. And I think part of that is just that I'm not as cranky about movies. <laughs> yeah, I was like, with my friend, because my friend is like, yeah, they're very smart. And they're like, um, you know, pointing out all of these plot holes and stuff and everything. And I'm like, dude, like, you can't just don't think about the film just just watch it and just have fun with it and they did really enjoy it at the end they're like yeah that was really good fun and whatever you know but i was like you can't if you start pulling at that thread of what doesn't make sense in this film or any real slasher around this time like just mm -hmm. 
just quit while you're ahead because like you won't enjoy the film just turn it off right now because it's that's that's not the point the point is not logic the point is not that it makes kind of any real world sense you know like because they were like oh like what in what world does a fucking detective interrogate people at a funeral and i'm like in a world where they have a hundred like a hundred minutes to get a whole entire film in and they're instead of having two separate scenes they're putting it into one and they were like oh mm -hmm. editing i was like yeah editing mm -hmm. yeah they were just being concise like you don't don't think too deeply about anything that's going on here and you'll have a great time you know <laughs> yeah it it it's of that stripe of that like urban legend. I know what you did last yeah. summer. You know that that style of movie, and I agree. I think if if you're getting nitpicky about it, it falls apart real fast. But if you just want to see kind of a fun slasher from that mm -hmm. era, you know, it's got a couple of good kills, and you know, it's fun. And hearing all the, the women like get catty with each other. <laughs> is like all that stuff is is fun in a real house oh, i was kind literally of way. just thinking that yeah i was literally just thinking that it's the kind of drama you live for in reality tv shows yeah it's just that kind of thing of like oh these th like these friends are not friends at no, all and it's real personal just... problems you know like <sighs> just bitching about each other's boyfriends and oh i don't have the oh i needed the new model of the ferrari <sighs> Yeah, yeah, right. It's it, right. It is rich white women <laughs> yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of fun. Like it's 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 fun because it's it it's only ninety minutes mm -hmm, long. Perfect. It has a pretty good pace. It's got a pretty good body count. Yeah, and nine of them. Yeah, and so you know, it's like, is it the best slasher out there? No, no but it's a pretty good time, and especially being that time of year like if you want to watch like my bloody valentine the original my, my bloody valentine is like the gold standard right like that movie is fantastic yeah it's really fucking good and yeah terrific terrific movie um but if you're looking for something that ain't that that you've seen a million times eh, throw on valentine it, you know when i rented it it was like two bucks on amazon and it was totally worthwhile it was, it was like really fun here. yeah it's just it's super fun. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not very expensive. It's just like twice the amount of what you paid for. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Look, bargains, baby. I'm like, I hunt for bargains. Yeah. Uh, no, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it is just a good, fun fucking film. And um, yeah, yeah, and I think like, you know, all right, yeah, it's white, rich white women problems and it's not shit that we can really relate to. But in terms of that, like, bitchiness, that kind of frenemies type scenario, like I feel like you know mm -hmm. everyone has been, especially women, and I know it's a it's a gender stereotype, and it's not always the case, but you know if it's going to happen, it's more likely I feel to happen within the you know female centric friendship groups, um, just because yeah, just like that, yeah, that whole thing, but um, of just like that competitiveness and that like just. And, and like as well especially like back then so like this film hit when I was like 13 and so that whole kind of like the early 2000s was like my prime teenage years in terms of like going through those changes and whatever and like but back then was also like as far as I'm concerned like the height of image pressure you know mm -hmm. like you had people like Victoria Beckham Paris Hilton you know all of these people who were like so insanely skinny and like you know they just just had this whole image that was but I mean I remember being a size zero was like something you strived for um it wasn't mm -hmm. considered like an eating disorder um you know and like and if you didn't look like those people then yeah you were fat and, it, and it's almost like you know if you want to give this film a bit more credit than is probably due you could even say that that's a commentary the fact that this woman actually is not fat and this girl is not fat and they're still calling her fat because of the standard that was set back then um and like so what it did for like people like me and my friends was like who didn't look like that because fucking no one looked like that unless you were Paris Hilton um you know it meant that you kind of had a lot of insecurities and stuff and then as you have insecurities like a very immature adolescent way of dealing with that is by lashing out 
and like you know so i feel like this film although is very like it's fucking dumb <laughs> and it's definitely i'm definitely like not about to say that it's a deep film or it's like trying to look into context but it is very relatable in those ways um especially like you know for someone like me who was like you know very conscious about what they look like very body conscious conscious very body insecure and all of that kind of stuff at the, you know that kind of time period um you know i can watch this film and i probably did relate to dorothy in a lot of ways um as an adult i think she's a fucking idiot but then i <laughs> i think i probably i'd have thought myself a fucking idiot if i went if i was like a fly on the wall for my teenage years i'd have probably wanted to slap myself silly so <laughs> um but yeah like it's um it it's an exaggeration but like i think that it does sort of reflect those kind of like catty friendship groups those frenemy friendship groups kind of thing quite well but i don't know if that sort of like transcends into the male sort of friendship group dynamics that were going on like you said that like it's not really something that you would have you wouldn't have acted in this way yep. or anything yeah, like I think I think that's way more subtle than most men would behave in that circumstance. Yeah, um, you know, because I I think men just lack uh, some of that subtlety and that that sort of passive aggressiveness. It's just overt aggression as opposed to being the passive aggressive. I would argue that's probably a healthier cattiness. way of dealing with it. Deal with shit straight on. Move on. I, probably, but it's less fun. <laughs> it's less entertaining for the I mean, for, you know for the masses. <laughs> right as as an outside observer like there is something i truly enjoy about a movie in which you see people just getting raw with each other <laughs> in a bad situation yeah. and it's the reason i love that like dinner table scene in hereditary <laughs> where you're just like holy shit this just got yeah. real oh. and i love that it, it's it's one of the things i like about valentine when i watch it it's like people just getting raw with each other at the drop of a hat like everybody's got a real hair trigger before they start talking shit about each yeah, other yeah it's just that kind of like that break of like you know you you fucking want some truth time? i'll give you some fucking truth i've been sitting on this shit you know like right like i've been looking for an excuse to lay this yeah bomb. exactly just fucking push yeah. me bitch like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, 100%. yeah yeah um it's super fun yeah yeah that was definitely our um, friendship group at school yeah. And listeners, if you have recommendations for movies, horror movies that involve catty people getting real with each <laughs> other, send them along because I am in the mood. <laughs> um, watching this, it was like, man, I wish this movie were kind of nastier. <laughs> I wish these people were even meaner to each yeah, other. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen the film? You saw Bodies, Bodies, Bodies last year, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was that great. had some of that in it, I think, didn't it? Yeah, and maybe and right. Maybe that's what set the table. Sissy had that as well, though. I fucking hate it, Sissy. Sissy I is like good. It. I yeah. fucking found it so annoying. I talk about it. Oh, yeah, really? I uh, talk about it in um in our end of year episode that we've just I've just literally dropped tonight. Um, so uh, all right, oh, I'll, this is uh... going to come out like ages later. So if anyone does listen to my show, I imagine they will have heard it by now. Um, but yeah, I basically just sort of like lay into how I fucking hate the character of Sissy, and I just want to punch a stupid face in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I would argue that that's kind of the point. I just but... find it too annoying. Too annoying. There's like a yeah, cast. Yeah, I I get it. You know. Um, but yeah, so like, um, yeah, like I I just. Yeah, there's always there's always sort of like that group that's just maybe like a bit vindictive and <sighs> yeah. Like, do you have like did you there was anything like that with you when you were at school? Like, did you have any groups or any girls yeah. who are kind of like that? Or guys, you know, not to stereotype, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not really, guys. There were definitely. I got it kind of vicariously right. because like the, the girls I would date would have friends and right. I would hear their conversations the guys like that, and by I would the way, be like, there's all this kind of thing of like, Oh God, when girls start talking about their friends, it's just like, blah, blah, white noise. But then you also get some stuff where it's kind of like, no, 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 fucking live for that shit. Tell me what the fuck Sandra was up to today. Cause I fucking hate that bitch. You know, like, yeah. what, like what was it? Was it like the, the latter one for you? yeah for sure it it was very much I, 
like <laughs> there was part of me that is kind of conflict averse and hearing that stuff i'm like oh my god i mean these are your friends why on earth would you be friends with them if you're gonna talk about them and with them yeah. like this and as i'm older now i realize like oh there's like it there is still affection there but there is also that like hey if if you have someone if you're lucky enough to have that person in your life who is a good gossip <laughs> you know like and i don't mean just like spreading shit all over town but it's like hey if i know you and trust you not to repeat yeah. this i'm gonna tell you all the real stuff yeah, that's going on right now tea. yeah and th that is the best and so i i went out with a girl in high school who was like that like she would she would say things about her friends um in particular she had a cousin that she went to school with who was about the same mm -hmm. age as her and she would be like you know she's got an eating disorder mm -hmm. and we're like what are you talking about and she's like oh yeah 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 not the good kind either <laughs> oh she was anorexic not bulimic yeah right. that's right and yeah it would just get you know like let me tell you let me tell you something else chelsea did you know chelsea went down on one of those guys she got drunk and just blew him at that party and you'd be like what what did she tell you that of course she told me that i told her i'd never tell anybody not another soul as long as i lived <laughs> Yeah, I love. I I actually I do. I think I'm that person, like not to. But yeah, like I'll keep a secret. But then there's always like that one or two people that you know. If you tell them, it's okay because they'll never say anything. Or they'll never. They don't know that person particularly. Like they don't. They're not. Right. They don't have a loyalty to that person. But they know that person enough to make it yeah. interesting. I'm like, oh, dude. So yeah, yeah. This, you know. Yeah, that's right. Like I, I had no emotional stake no. in it. Other than, like, b vaguely knowing who they yeah, were. Yeah, enough to have that kind and of so, involvement. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, oh, I'm never going to talk to them. So, yeah. you know. And also, like, I knew which side my bread was buttered on. I was like, look, I want to keep getting laid. <laughs> yeah. And if you find out that I repeated any of this, yeah, I'm in real trouble. Yeah, that goes away real fast. Yeah. Right, right. I'm not looking. I'm not looking for that well to dry up. So. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't want to go through the desert on a horse with no name or nothing here i like i like getting it wet and <laughs> um wait is that what that song is about maybe wow, i'm gonna really listen to that song i'm gonna listen real hard to those lyrics i mean i can't say that for sure i hope maybe. so that's i mean it, it should be should. yeah I mean, like as far as i'm concerned every song is about drugs sex or a combination yeah. of the two yeah basically i agree but yeah no nah, it's um did you as well like the dynamic duo is, is different as well because i feel like when you get older those same dynamics are there but it's at work mm -hmm. and it's not the same it's not quite the same because you know these are people who you you don't necessarily like they're not friends as such. They can be friends. Like I have a really good circle of people who I genuinely call my friends who I made in my last job, but they're like, usually like in the types of environments that I work with, there's usually like a smaller department or it's a smaller company. And like, there's a whole ring of people, but then there's always those like one or two people that everyone hates or that like, is just like you're nice to because you have to be, because you work together but jesus mm -hmm. christ as soon as they leave the room like oh my fucking god you know like <laughs> i like so we had the the covid version of that like after the pandemic started and we were working from right. home there would be the the group text chain or the group chat <laughs> of like this is all of us talking about what's going mm -hmm. on and then there was one guy that i worked with who was an older guy his name was charles and Charles would say something that was incredibly stupid. <laughs> and then you would see like, like a Christmas tree lighten up all these like sub chats with people where they're like, God damn it. If Charles says another word, he is making this meeting last 10, 10 minutes longer than yeah. it needs to. I swear to God, I'm going to go to his house and flatten his yeah. tires. I've been uh, in a group chat before where, um, 
there was like this yeah it's like it was like a sub group chat of like a main chat and like or like even just like if you've got like your one particular friend you'll just like dm them you know like on a one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. and like, oh my god like there was, there was a group chat where someone just always just brought up these stupid like it was such bullshit like there's just no like they would just like indicate that they were like that they were connected with like these local gangs and all the rest of it and they would make all these kind of like non um like these sort of like hints where it's just like oh no but i didn't say that but it's just like but i am really this but you know it's just that kind of like it was like attention seeking kind of stuff you know where it's kind of like oh mm -hmm. yeah i know about this but oh i don't know about this kind of thing and it's just like, i'll just shut the fuck up and like um i like me and my mate would just be like oh fuck's sake he's on about us again like yeah we get it you're fucking hardcore and dangerous this is why you're working for a fucking office and like you know um and it was just that kind of like thing but then like in the chat we're like oh no way mate Whoa. <laughs> just like, oh this fucking yeah. guy it was it was my favorite occasionally i'll still because i i can i i still have the same chat client that we use for work and every now and again i'll just dump in not to the the work yeah. chat but i'll just hit up like the people that i used to you know gossip with all the time <laughs> there and and be like hey what's going on with charles these days like oh son of a bitch you're not gonna right? believe what he did yeah you know? yeah i have like a whole so uh, i'm gonna keep this very loosey-goosey with identities but like i have like a bunch of people who i hang out with from my old job and um there's this person who kind of tags along sometimes and they all still kind of like work together for the most part and things like that and like we were hanging out the other day without this other person and i was like talking about my upcoming birthday celebrations and i was like oh yeah so we're gonna do this and this and you guys yeah, and like, yeah yeah like, oh what about such and such and i was just like oh no i mentioned it to them the other day because they overheard me talking about it with someone else but i really hope they fucking forgot because quite frankly i just don't want them there and then like my mm -hmm. mates are just like oh say so yeah, how it is i'm like dude like cut like come on like, i just i just don't like them <laughs> and like but every time like because they're part of this sort of like chat in this overall group i'm like it's just easier to play along nice because they've not done anything right. specifically they just fucking annoy me like they're just so <laughs> whiny and they're just such yeah, attention yeah, yeah. seeking. It's that, oh, they, if they were of an age to have Facebook, because they were a bit, quite a bit younger than me, if they were of an age to have Facebook, they would do that fucking vague booking thing. Like, uh, I'm in the hospital. Do, like, don't message me though. Like, uh, you know, and it's oh, fuck off, just fuck off. <sighs> and it's like, they would, oh, they'd constantly do this. Instead of just being like, calling up the office and being like hey i need some time because of xyz personal matters or like i'm you know suffering like some anxiety today or whatever because they often it'd be like in the group chat it'd be like uh can someone like cover my shift because i'm having like a real hard time with this and i'm having this going on and this and this and like but don't worry guys like i'm fine but i could really just not do it and it's just like dude just fucking ask for a shift swap you know yeah. just like no one gives a fuck like we're like certain people i'm sure will give a fuck but talk to them directly the whole fucking company doesn't need to know about the ins and outs of your fucking mental health which i'm sure is a fucking bitch to deal with but like it doesn't need to be like no, no one here needs to know this we just need you we just need the bare bones of you need a shift swap you know and it, it just mm -hmm. is such this like attention seeking thing but if anyone ever went oh hey like are you okay what's up uh no like no i'm, I'm fine oh i just can't deal with that man all right i got a good okay. one for you so <laughs> last night i was going to get just a haircut just getting my hair right. trimmed up because i had an interview yeah. today in theory <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> which didn't work out but whatever and yeah stupid <sighs> weather but so i i pop in real quick and i'm like hey i just need to get this trimmed up uh you know so that I look a little bit more <laughs> professional uh and i don't look like i constantly have bedhead <laughs> and uh so i'm getting my hair cut and there are two women who are cutting hair at the mm -hmm. time and one of them i was like hey how's your day you know because i'm a friendly yeah. sort and just uh just chatting 
And she says, you know, it's pretty good. I, I came in to work today. This is my day off, but I came in because they said they need a hand. And then I went home and I woke up after a nap and there's like 15 text me- messages from Susie saying that she's got to go to the hospital. And so now I got to come back in and close for uh, the the place tonight. And then her other, like the other woman that was there chimes in and was like, you know, that's bullshit. And so I just get the front row seat to them talking smack about Susie and about how like, you know what? Most of the time she's okay, but every now and again, she just gets in her head that she doesn't want to work. What was it last time? She said she had an ear infection. Yeah. Last time she said she had an ear infection and had to go to the hospital and they're just running her up one side and down the other. And like, yeah, so now we're closing an hour early. You know why? Cause I don't feel like closing for Susie tonight. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it's just that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is these people. It's just like oh, I, I see through it. your bullshit so hard. And the thing is, as well, with this person, with like on my end, it's not even like they're spinning lies. They're just, it's just, it's constant. It's like all the time, but they won't ask. Like if you try and reach out to like sympathize or do anything, they'll just do that mm-hmm. kind of like, uh, no, nah, babe, like it's okay. I'll like, I. I'll be fine. Like, I don't, you know, and it's just like, well then don't, don't fucking whinge about it. Then you're either fine or you're not. If you're not, you know, we can help. If you, if you don't want it, then like, don't tell us about it then. Like, don't, you know what I mean? And it's just, and it's just gone on for so long. Like it's been like over a year that it's been like this and everyone's just like, God damn it. And like, um, no one panders to it anymore. Everyone's just like, yeah, I'll take that shift. And just no one comments. No one hearts the messages. No one, do you know what I mean? This was like, yeah, yeah. Right. We're just going to ignore this until it goes <laughs> Basically, away. Basically, yeah. 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 I like so it. I was just like, yeah, I don't really want them coming to like going on the night out because I just don't like them. And like, my mates are just like, wow. And I was just like, but where's the lie? You know, like they're annoying as fuck, and I don't want them there. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, I've, it's one of those things where like I can be like very, um, sort of uh, passive aggressive and shit, but at the same time, I can also be very upfront and blunt. <laughs> just you have yeah. to just get me past a well, certain oh, point. Oh well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, I know it's weird, right? Me upfront and blunt, um, but yeah, and like the thing is, is that like if I didn't have really that much i don't really have that much to do with them anymore otherwise i probably would just be a bit more on front to their face because i don't really like doing the whole behind i mean it is fun to gossip and shit but like i don't usually like to be the instigator of it i like to like hear it you know i like to be the on the receiving end of like oh you got some good gossip oh fucking tell me you know but like i don't like to just like bitch about people behind people's backs and I do often, sure. like yeah, more yeah. often than not, if I'm bitching and moaning to someone, either I've already bitched and moaned to that person's face, or I have every intention of doing so and will do it. But like for someone who I see like once every few weeks and like we go to the gym, so it's not as if we're even hanging out. Like I just don't have, I did, there's just no point in causing that aggro and causing that disruption in the group especially because she's not done anything properly wrong it's just i find i find them annoying (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah i mean you know but i I, that provides a bonding opportunity for you and yeah yeah it's great because they also feel the same but i just don't know if they Mm -hmm. feel quite as strongly as i do but like yeah it's just one of those things where it's like, well, they've not done anything outwardly wrong. So if we would say like, no, you can't sit with us in theory, it would just be like, just a bit mean. But apparently instead it's perfectly okay to just sit there and bitch. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love yeah. it. Um, Fuck's sake. I'll tell you what, let us, let us shift to our final yes, segment. Yes. And uh, as we are running a bit oh, long. Oh yeah, sorry dude. And no, no, no. It, look, 
I'm never going to complain about spending extra time with you, my friend. <laughs> oh. So, uh, but let it, let us move to our final segment. Tinder is the flesh. Yeah. Where you provide us with Tinder profiles and here lately we've been we've been doing three yeah and then we kind of rank them yeah and so i look i always love these so <laughs> you you tell okay. me okay okay so uh so first up today we have uh oh I i've also as well been taking a bit of a breather from tinder so i don't have any mm -hmm. outrageous awful fucking messages that are directly being sent to me thank christ um because okay. remember last time we had that guy who was just like oh yeah like i'd love to fucking i don't know do all kinds of fucking shit i don't want him to um anyway so yeah so we've got anthony 34 okay and he says to the girls over 30 i'm an anesthesiologist looking to start a family to the girls under 30 i'm hung and i'm hung and breed labrador puppies huh okay <laughs> yeah. i i get i get appealing to the masses i get appealing to certain demographics i i am assuming that there is an there is a limit to the under 30 like we're talking 18 to 30 at least mm -hmm. um but i'm hung and and breed labrador puppies right it, i understand the like hey i'm wrong yeah. um, i don't know why over 30 year olds aren't caring about that as someone over 30 yeah i would I've, think why aren't you putting the puppy thing into the over 30 i just don't know why your entire thing isn't just i'm hung and breed labrador puppies that that just right. ticks boxes to everyone i feel and and say like hey i'm looking to start a family with the right woman of the right yep. age but also open to have a good time. All right. I, I, I think that is badly written. I'm, I'm not crazy about it, but I don't think it's the worst thing we've, we've done. Here. No, it's just, it's an odd one. Yes. It's very, yeah, this next one's an odd one, but in a very, <laughs> just, okay. So this is a female, mm -hmm. um, very lovely looking lass very um mm -hmm. instagram prissy shall we say mm -hmm. okay um she probably has a, a link tree link <laughs> on her instagram page shall okay. we say she's called diamond oh wow and her her instagram reads never dull the sparkle of your stardust <laughs> all with right the star swirly shooting star emoji next to it okay that's it yep. that's all uh all right well and diamond was her yep. name okay mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. all right let's let's just move on to the third one Let, i'm gonna reserve judgment <laughs> on that one uh and this one is matt um who uh -huh. i'm gonna describe he has got a red baseball cap, uh -huh. a mustache that would put Tom Selleck to shame, like okay. thick, mm -hmm. and a mullet with thick-rimmed glasses. Oof! A All very right. um, slim build guy with massively baggy clothes, though. Mm -hmm. And he says, he's Matt, he's 32, and he says, because he's a gardener, he's a self-employed gardener, according to his bio, cutting grass and eating ass. <laughs> uh, okay. So these are our choices. We've got Anthony, who is hung and breeds Labrador puppies. Hopefully he's not hung like a Labrador uh -huh. puppy. We've got Diamond, definitely her real name. Never told uh -huh. the sparkle of your stardust. And then we mm -hmm. have Matt the gardener cutting grass and eating ass. Rank him, please, my dear friend Bo. Oh, boy, this is <laughs> rough. Um, all right, so I think... Hmm, uh, this is <laughs> tough. This is a tough one. I... Uh, <laughs> 
I've heard you say stuff think, before. <laughs> I know the problem is that you've got Matt who like it's a little bit cheeky, but your description of him suggests that like, all right, maybe it's less cheeky than it is he thinks it's clever. Yeah. So that's not great. <laughs> Diamond, eh, Diamond is flaky. I think it's. I think that's the order. I think it's. I think it's Anthony number right, one. Okay. I I don't. I like. I again, there are problems with the way that it's written and all that. But I don't think if it carries your favor, he's holding um, an incredible Hulk mug. All right. Yeah. I see. I'm okay yeah. with that. And. Like, I I think the differentiation of like, hey, I, there's part of me that gets that of like, hey, if you're looking to have a good time and you're younger, like, I'm not going to take that as seriously mm -hmm. and we can just fool around. I But I think he's doing a disservice to himself yeah. that if he if he is interested in somebody that's more mature, just go with that double down. On yeah, that. yeah. And and forget the like, have a separate Tinder pl profile for. Mm. Hey, if you're 18 to 30, I'm hung and breed puppies. Yeah, with like a different and then have the other. kind of thing. So there's no cross. Yeah, there. right. Like, how right, awkward right. would that be if you saw like, oh, this guy seems real nice. He wants to start a family. He's got a good job. He's an anesthesiologist and stuff. Swipe right. And then literally the next page is the exact same profile, except that he's like, oh, I'm hung and breed Labrador puppies looking for like 25 and unders. Can <laughs> you like imagine yeah. that? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I think he. I think by trying to appeal to everyone, he's appealing to yeah. no one. But I think that Diamond, with her like dreamy profile, yeah. I I think she's a number two because she sounds like she is going to be a real dyed in the wool kind of a hippie chick, and not in the fun way, but more of the like failed poet kind of mm -hmm. way. Like I think she's going to be irritating. Yeah. Yeah. She's um she's gonna be the kind of person that I mean, all right, again, not about slame uh, slame shine, slut shaming or anything, um, at all. Um, but she kind of like definitely has the aesthetic of with her makeup and stuff of a stripper. But she's the mm -hmm. kind of person who'll be like a stripper, but like call it like exotic dancing if that makes sense like like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sounds very judgmental but do you know what i mean like she'll be kind of like oh yeah no like and she'll like do the hair twirling and like blowing bubble gum and stuff you mm -hmm. know like it's that kind of person she'll, you know and she'll have like fairies all over her car like fairy stickers all over her car and shit yeah like, yeah yeah a lot of exist issues. stickers yeah um, yeah, daddy strippers. issues is I have probably with strippers and they're really great people in sex work as work. Just to clarify, yes. I totally agree. But you know, very few people, I think, go into exotic dancing because it's their first choice. Of the job. <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent. It's either they actually have a really fucking good career that they're trying to fund because uh -huh. fucking medical school or whatever is expensive, or they're just not that bright. And they just can't maintain a job anywhere else. <laughs> so they give what their mama, right. they and, work I what mean, their mama gave them, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. And I mean, not that it's not difficult work and oh, all that. Really hard, um, you don't really right. require like, much of a this brain is not... to do it, though. Sure, sure. You just have to be athletic and reasonably yes. attractive. Um, okay, so yeah. And then Matt, our final candidate. Yeah. Um, I Everything about that just sounds like a like off-putting he's not super attractive the you know cutting grass and eating ass that's not doing any favors for anybody really like yeah the, i mean all of this just sounds like a bad idea so i am i am of the idea that if you were going to date any of these i would start with anthony and then on the date i would tell him like man you need to clean this profile <laughs> yeah I'll be your wing. I'll be, be your wing guy. Like I may not necessarily get with you tonight, but I'm gonna help you out. You know? Right, right. Because you're you got a lot going on here, and right. right. 
um you just you, you need to you need to double down on one or oh. the other or or get a different profile mm-hmm. um and that yeah and then diamond just like if all you wanted to do was get a quick roll in the hay i think maybe diamond is is your yeah. girl but you just don't want to hear anything she has to oh, say. Oh no, this is um, shh, honey, less is more. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, she's not giving you a lot on that profile, but it says a lot. Yeah, speaks volumes with very little. In fairness, you got to give her props for that. She's given us a very good insight to who she is with very little. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and who she is is going to be somebody that I can't tolerate after about fifteen. No, nah, that's a come and done. Yeah coming done um <laughs> well i think that's gonna do it yeah, here Kate. yeah i'm agreement with you with all the reasons that you've given as well that would be my pref and the yeah. last guy i would just avoid like wholeheartedly yeah, just avoid because yeah. you'll end up in a dumpster somewhere <laughs> right you're all all valentine's <laughs> yeah right you're right gonna end up with arrows air- shooting out of your chest yeah uh-huh. yeah yeah that's gonna be a mess um (laughs) all right well i i I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode Happy valentine's happy valentine's to you uh and and to all the people listening to all the people whether you are believing in it whether you just think it's a a a horrible fucking card company thing whether you're single or not i hope that you get to at least eat lots of chocolate yeah and if you can't eat chocolate how about try cutting some grass and yeah. some ass or just having a wank yeah that's yeah. fine too yeah you know i mean even in a committed relationship every now and again you gotta just be like you know what let's just clean it's the pipes fucking easier sometimes isn't it yeah. yeah you know how about how about we don't go through all the song and dance how about i just come yeah let's get to the end <laughs> yeah let's let's get past the part where i gotta like role play <laughs> <laughs> well with that tell you what romance eh <laughs> uh-huh uh, all right everyone uh kate where can people find you oh, yeah, when sure. you're not here talking about catty people and come dumpsters you know dating ghosts <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. uh yeah so um we are back up and running um i do another show called eternal darkness of not so spotless minds uh you can find that on um anchor and spotify google apple stitcher um we have taken a bit of a hiatus for a few months but we are back baby um i didn't feel good about that no, didn't. but anyway we are back no, um, yeah, it's fine it's fine <laughs> we are back and we've just dropped a, an end of year uh show just you know reviewing all of the films well of some of the films at least anyway that we've seen from last year and ranking them in the usual way uh but we will be coming back um normally of our normal sort of monthly schedule uh from february and stuff and it's just like a very light-hearted show that looks at movies of the horror and dark umbrella genre persuasion and we have a lot of shits and gigs basically and uh yeah basically it great um and you know obviously if you're listening to this then you're listening to the dark parade and there will be more next week but uh and kate will be back next month yeah. t- to talk about a non-valentine's day related movie and more relationship stuff mm-hmm. um we had a, a, I, you know we'll see how it goes but uh for for march with it being spring and all oh. we ought to talk about you know first times <gasps> Oh, have I told my story of first times? I don't know if you have or oh, not. Okay, I need. I, do you know what? I really should go back through and just log all the stories that I tell, so I don't repeat stuff. We, you need a spreadsheet. I really you do. need like a, a smutty, smut, smut, a smut a smut sheet. Sheet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'll have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you uh, ever so much for listening, and uh, and we'll see you in a month. And thank you, Kate, thank as always, for being so. the best. Uh, you're the best. You're the best. Mm-hmm. Hang out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. bye.